Commissioner, are you ready? Ready or not. All right. Like to call to order this meeting for the Sweetwater County Board of County Commissioners from February 15, 2022. There is a quorum present of four commissioners in um, in the chambers. Uh, Commissioner Chairman Smith is excused due to a family emergency, and we wish him the best. And our thoughts are with him today as he deals with family matters today. With that being said, uh, will you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we will stay we will stay risen for a moment of silence. Thank you. Next up is we need to approve our agenda. I do want to mention there are a couple um, um, changes that have been brought to me about the agenda. Specifically, um, tab H has been asked to be removed. Tab H was, um, pull that up, um, The with uh, Mr. Ligurski and the Curative Abbott Lab temporarily using 731 C Street. They will be using an alternative address. So that can be pulled from the agenda. Also in executive, um, we already have one I item of legal um, listed. There will be a second legal that will be um, listed in agenda. Is there any other changes or amendments that need to be made to the agenda today? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we uh, I think we can cover it under uh, after pre to approve the uh, FNERPA grant for our plan. I believe we can cover it under that tab. Under where? After uh, pre-decisional on the uh, cooperator, federal co cooperators. Um, just a little reach over to John DeLeon. John, would that be an appropriate place to put that agreement to do it under the cooperative stuff we already have listed? I mean, I think it's the same. When we, okay. come, when we come out public, yeah, we could approve it. Okay. okay. With that being said, do I have, can I get a motion to um, agenda, amend, uh, to accept the amended agenda with the amendments being uh, tab H being removed and an additional legal being added. Mr. Mr. Chairman, oh, I would make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor with an aye? Aye. Aye. Passes majority. All right. We come back to the top now. Up next is uh, the approval of minutes for the um, uh, February 1st, 2022 meeting. Um, has everyone had a chance to read them? And if so, um, can, I get a mo can I get a motion to pass those minutes as presented? So moved. A, mo a motion by Commissioner Shanfield. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Wendling. All in favor, approve with an aye. 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 All right, with that, a, a, a motion passes. Up next is the acceptance of the bills, which would be the approval of county vouchers, warrants, EALs, approval of bonds, approval of monthly reports, abates related to Southland settlement agreement and stipulations, approval of abates, rebates, and approval of hospital maintenance expenditures. Could I get a motion for those? Mr. Chairman, I'll well, make a motion to approve as presented. That's a motion by um, Commissioner Shanfield. Can I have a second? Second. I Second by Commissioner Wendling. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wendling. Uh, thank you. Um, I would just like to point out that uh, as the uh, Southland settlement comes together and finishes up, that uh, we remind our uh, treasurer not to distribute any money um, from that last payment until we have that conversation 
um, to make sure we're all aboard uh, with regard to um, uh, deducting the attorney fees for that lawsuit and then distribute the remaining dollars based on uh, uh, the percentages that uh, we used with the first dollars. So I just uh, pointed discussion uh, to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wendling. Um, we're going to bring up uh, Treasurer Barbudo real quick to just make a comment on that since he's here. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, and uh, thanks for accommodating me on a kind of unusual point in the agenda. Um, regarding this Southland, uh, the bankruptcy settlement and the abatements we have as a result, um, first of all, I wanted to have this on record today because this is a lot more than we usually have in the list of abatements. And so for the auditors next year, having this in the minutes, I think will help them understand um, that per the settlement agreement we reached, um, that the 1.7 million amount there you see is the most that we can collect on that tax bill due in 2021. Um, the 2020 and 2019 tax bills were already taken care of in the original uh, $15 million settlement, but we couldn't bill anything after that until this 21 tax bill. So um, because we can only do up to that amount though, we'll have to abate that. It comes to uh, just a little over 2 million for all four of their accounts which are, which are held by WAMSET or EMP right now. Um, as Commissioner Windling mentioned, uh, under Wyoming statutes, it is permissible to reimburse legal fees in when they're associated with collecting taxes. And so uh, to do that though, um, if you wanted to take that course of action today, uh, the statutes also require you to certify the amount that you want to um, have reimbursed. So I can't just make those reimbursements without you guys taking action today. And if you do that today, then we'll have to take the those four accounts um, in, that are related to Southland off the abate list and move that to your next meeting because it'll change the amount that we have to abate. I do think it would be best to make it an agenda item on the next meeting. Uh, do the rest of my commissioners agree? Yes. John, from a legal point, would that be the best way to handle that? I think that's okay. good. Well, okay. a, so, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mindley. Yeah, just comment on that. That keeps everything very transparent because it is tax dollars. It is uh, um, the people we represent. So next agenda would be perfect. Yes. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, just for clarification, you're gonna, you'll have to take some action, I think, and, and Mr. DeLeon can uh, advise on this, but to remove those from that list of abates, if you're going to move that to the okay. next meeting. And then I don't know if you wanna take action today to allow for the reimbursement of those legal fees. Um, otherwise I can see a situation where we could be putting this out for two more meetings, which is just kind of extending the story longer than no. any of us probably wanted. Um, but that's up to all of you and maybe I guess, um, on your recommendations. Um, I think um, I think we um, I think the first course of action is we need to probably um, amend the motion and pull out the um, a baits and rebates regarding specifically uh, a baits to Southland um, and settlement agreement and stipulations. And I guess I would since it is taxpayer dollars and how we're going to be handling it, I do think it would be best to put it on the next agenda. So it's clear and transparent, in my opinion, um, uh, just to make sure the rest of my commissioners are in, um, in favor of that. Um, just um, what do you just with a nod or yes, does everyone agree that we should do that next meeting and just um, amend the uh, pulling out the um, making a an amendment on the um, acceptance of bills and not accepting the abates related to Southland settlement. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Swendling? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Shanfield? Sure. And Commissioner Toman? Yes. So can we get another, uh, an amended motion that does Chairman. not, that pulls the, um, the abates related to Southland settlement? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Wendling. I would make a motion that we amend the approval of the bills and remove the, uh, um, ABH related to Southland Settlement Agreement and stipulations. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Discussion. Already had plenty of it. All right, with that, all in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 With that, Thank motion you. passes. Thank you, uh, Treasurer Barbudo. Up next is a public budget point amendment order. hearing. Mr. Yes. Chairman, point over. 
uh, we only approved the amended motion. We need to go back and approve the uh, original motion to approve paying the bills. Thank you, uh, Chairman Wendling. Can we get a motion to approve the uh, the can we get a motion to um, for acceptance of the bills? We already have that motion seconded. Second. Okay. We just have okay, to. Thank vote. you guys for clarification. That got a little bit clicky there. All in favor um, for the acceptance of the bills with an aye. 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 A motion passes. Thank you, everyone, for supporting that because that was a little trickier than we anticipated. Up next will be a public um, tab C public budget amendment. We'll bring up um, Bonnie Berry. Bonnie, thank you. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This morning we have resolution 22 02 CL 01. This is a Sweetwater County budget amendment to increase the Commissioner's operating budget from it increases the, ex the expenditures in the general fund by $41,842. It decreases the general reserve in the general county reserves in the same amount by $41,842. Um, we will need to have a public hearing on this before it can be approved by the board. Um, are there any questions on this budget amendment? Uh, fellow commissioners, does anyone have any questions for um, Bonnie Berry? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Wendling. I, I think it would be important for transparency that Bonnie, if you would please explain why we need that money. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Um, I just projected out, this is the expenditures that I projected out that the commission would need in their operating budget through the remainder of the year. Uh, there were a couple things that were not budgeted and there are a few things that are over budget. Um, this came about because uh, accounting was attempting to pay the coalition of local governments dues and couldn't pay that bill because it would have put that budget over budget. Um, also tribal nations was $5,000. Oh, sorry, the coalition of local governments dues was 17,500. Thank you. Um, tribal nations dues $5,000. Um, Turn corps, specific purpose, purpose tax marketing. Um, that was approved, I believe at the last meeting for $20,000. Um, so, and then also um, the, 2022 legislative session. Um, some expenses are already encumbered for that, um, such as the hotels and the registration, um, but the mileage and meals will need to um, come out of that budget. And that, my calculation for that was $2,989.45. Um, just projected operating expenses through the rest of the year, I was projecting a little over $5,000. And then um, I deducted out what was remaining in the operating budget, which was $8,671.89 when I calculated this, which came to a total of $41,841.38. So I rounded up and we got to $41,842. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Chairman, uh, Mr. Winley, thank you for asking that question. That was my question also. Any other questions? If no other questions from the commission, we will open this up for a public hearing. So at this point, if there's any public comment, please come forward. And if you come forward, please make sure you speak into the mic and introduce yourself. And this public comment is specific to the budget amendment. We will call for other public comment in a minute. So we always have people that get confused with that. So we'll clarify. So we're good. And we look forward to hearing from you in a minute. So. Cindy, anything? Okay, we'll give it just another minute. Being no comment, we'll go ahead and close public comment at this point. So fellow commissioners, um, and with, um, with regards to resolution 22-02-CL-01, a Sweetwater County budget amendment for uh, commissioners operating, increasing it from $41,842, taking it from the general reserves for items listed by Bonnie Berry. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by um, motion by uh, Commissioner Shanefield. Do I have a second? Yes, I can second that. Okay, second by Commissioner Toman. Um, any discussion? With no discussion, all in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Good thing I canceled my trip to DC and did um, it. Good thing I canceled my trip to DC and did it via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. Thank you, Bonnie. Up next will be a um, tab D, which is um, 
public hearing, planning and zoning. Uh, there will be two items listed today and Ms. Toomer will be our presenter. And prior to presenting, I do wanna thank Eric and the planning department for their hard work. And uh, they were sharing information with us quite regularly over the last three or four days in preparation for this. And I just wanna make sure we acknowledge your department for the great work that you've done. And as always, you make our job really easy as you present. So we look forward to your presentation. So I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Toomer. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Um, our first public hearing today is for a variance um, on the required infrastructure on proposed lot 1A of the RONIC um, replat. Uh, normally, a replat doesn't come before even the Planning and Zoning Commission or before the Board of County Commissioners, um, but because uh, a variance is needing to be approved for the replat to go through, this is why we're here today. Um, the property is owned by Energy 307 LLC, um, and the applicant is Kent Felderman um, on behalf or working with JFC. Um, this property is currently zoned I-1. Um, it's where the old Tud Supper Club um, is at. What they're proposing to do um, is split the property into two um, where the old Ted Supper Club is on the east half. Um, it has all the existing utilities that it needs to keep functioning as a business. Um, and then the lot 1A is on the west side where it is gonna be still remain a vacant property. Um, there are no plans at this time that we are aware of for this property to be developed. It's just getting ready to be sold. Um, these are the pictures of the public notice and site photos that Mr. Zimmerman took when we posted everything. And the actual um, variance is being requested from the Sweetwater County Subdivision Regulations, Section 5E3B4. And it reads, the applicant is responsible for the installation of all infrastructure improvements to the lots which serve the original lot at the time of the replat application. The replat shall not be recorded until such improvements are installed unless the applicant provides financial insurance in compliance with the subdivision regulations. Um, due to this being a subdivision variance and not just a, a regular variance per code, there are actually five criteria that our office looks at um, to make sure everything is kosher and um, in moving forward. And we'll briefly go through those. The first is that owing to the extraordinary circumstances, literal enforcement of the provisions of this resolution will result in undesirable characteristics such as traffic movement, lot design, or utility extensions. The proposed lot 1A will be vac vacant land and there is no proposed development for the property at this time. Due to this nature, it will be hard to determine the size and location for water and sewer service line extensions. Not knowing the size of development or even where the location the approximate location would result in undesirable characteristics for the utility extensions at this time. Criteria number two, that the variance if granted will not cause any offsite problems such as traffic, utilities, drainage, water, and sanitation on other properties. Um, we do not foresee uh, this variance if granted that it will cause any of these pro offsite problems. Criteria number three, the variance if granted will not substantially or permanently injure any adjacent conforming properties. Uh, the land use staff does not see um, that approving this variance that there's gonna be any of these problems as stated before the proposed lot 1B already has all the required utilities that it needs to continue um, as a developed property. Um, this variance is simply just for the vacant um, lot 1A at this time. Criteria number four, the variance if sought, the variance if granted, excuse me, is the minimum variance and lease modification that will afford the relief sought. If the variance is granted, it will be the minimum variance and lease modification of, to afford the relief sought. Not requiring the installation of all infrastructure improvements to the proposed lot 1A, which served the original lot at the time of the replat application, would allow for the correct size and location of these utilities to be installed at the time the property is developed. Um, this is something that will be caught when um, the property owner will come to our office and apply for a building permit. Um, it will subsequently trigger all these improvements to be um, installed. And the last criteria we look at is that 
the variance will be in harmony with the spirit of this resolution and will not adversely affect the public safety or welfare. And we do not see any, we have not seen and will not see any um, adverse effects to the public health, safety and welfare. When we put this out for public and agency comment, we received two comments back from agencies. The first being Kinder Morgan. Um, they do have facilities in the described legal area and they were requesting a detailed drawing of the area for the proposed work to ensure their facilities were kept safe. Um, after a couple different correspondence back with Tony O'Brien, who works for Kinder Morgan, um, we assured them that we don't know what this property is going to be developed for, hence we can't give him the requested drawings and everything he was looking for. And after kind of clearing things up a little bit, he um, was okay with that and did not have any adverse comments um, to this variance. And then Sweetwater County Emergency Management has no concerns with this variance either. At the February 9th, 2022 meeting, the PNZ Commission voted four to zero to recommend the approval based on staff recommendations. And staff also at this time um, recommends approval. That's all I have for public hearing one, Commissioner. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Duber. Um, any questions so far, Commissioner? Any for any of our commissioners? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Um, Wenley. Um, Megan, no conditions with us. That is correct. There's no conditions. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Is there a representative um, regarding this that would like to make any comments today? And if so, come to the mic and uh, speak in the mic directly and introduce yourself and any guests you may have with you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kent Felderman. I'm with JFC Engineers and Surveyors representing the plat today. Since the uh, owners were unable to attend, I'm simply here to represent the plat and this variance procedure in the event that any questions come up for that reason. Are there any questions, commissioners, for Mr. Felderman? Looks like you get off the hook today, Mr. Felderman, and a <laughs> Thanks, pretty Dan. clean Bye. bill, but um, good work on this, but we appreciate it, so. Thank you. At this point, we will open it up for public comment. So with that being said, open for any public comment regarding this planning and zoning issue. Being as there's none, we'll go ahead and close that. So with that, commissioners, that will bring it back to us. Um, uh, do I have, um, um, what is your uh, flavor? What's your choice to do with recommendation 22-02-ZO-01 for approval of a variance for installation of all infrastructure improvements from section 5.E3B4 dot of the 2012 Sweetwater County subdivision regulations requested by Travis Wilkinson Energy 307 LLC. What's your guys' favorite? Mr. Chairman, I would approve that motion. I already got to hear the expanded version in PNZ. <laughs> That's a motion by um, Commissioner uh, Tolman. Do I have a second? Second. second. Sorry. Go ahead. That's a tie. <laughs> and we'll give it to ladies first with um, Commissioner Sanfield. Any other discussion? With no further discussion, all in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. So we'll move on to our second and uh, our second presentation. Um, once again, to Ms. Doomer. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Our second uh, public hearing we have today is for the Lagoon Subdivision Final Plat. Um, the property is currently owned by Smith International Inc. And the applicant is Mike Thompson with Slumber J. Um, this is a roughly 35 acre uh, parcel of land that's located where the old Slumber J buildings are um, just a little bit south of the Curl Jacks exit. Um, this is a I-2 heavy industrial zoned um, property and the current infrastructure that resides out there is being serviced by West Side Water and Sewer, the city of Rock Springs Water. Uh, Fire District 1 is the responder, and Rocky Mountain Power and Dominion Energy also um, have utilities in the area. Um, just a bit of background. It's been a while since you guys have seen us. Actually, you guys have not heard anything. Excuse me. This has only been presented to um, 
the PNZ Commission. This is the first time you guys have heard it, but there's been a little back and forth. This has been kind of an interesting, very good learning experience uh, for myself. But um, in moving forward, a little bit of background. We were originally under the impression that the property was owned by WH Energy Rocky Mountain Inc. This was the latest record we had um, here at the courthouse and also was the latest record that was provided by um, the title commitment that was requested just through the process of our subdivision um, through lots of correspondence and digging in to this further. We have subsequently come out um, to the point where Smith International actually is who owns the property. Um, so we're grateful to have uh, figured that out. There has been um, two mergers that have happened that have led us to this point. And another important um, piece of information that I'd like to bring to your guys' attention is that on January 5th, 2022, the land use staff just happened to um, find out that there was a transaction that was taking place on this property um, that was proposed to be subdivided for the Lagoon subdivision. Um, book 1,243, page 2,985, was recorded on December 20th, 2021 at 11.04 a.m. This was a special warranty deed from Smith International Inc. to Quest Star Gas Company. The meets and bounds description legal in exhibit B described the proposed lot two of the Lagoon subdivision. Um, the land use staff worked closely with the Sweetwater County Attorney's Office um, to discuss this illegal subdivision matter. Um, per Wyoming state statute, uh, this was determined that because a deed was recorded it and it being prior to the subdivision process, it was um, to be deemed illegal. Um, working closely with John DeLeon um, and the rest of the land use staff, the January 2022 meeting for the Planning and Zoning Commission was postponed um, due to finding out this information kind of at the last minute and needing to seek legal counsel on this. Since then, the land use staff and the county's attorney's office have proposed that due to this illegal subdivision, Questar Gas Company will now be considered part owner on the property and will also need to be signed on the plat. Um, we also wanna make note that it is recommended. Fortunately, we cannot require this, um, but we would recommend that to help clean up records after this plat gets recorded, that a new legal description um, being described as lot two of the Lagoon subdivision be recorded on it as deeded to Questar just to kind of help clean up the um, records for people to come after us that won't be here in 20 years. I think looking around the office, I won't be the only one here, unfortunately. But um, just a little bit of background there. We've worked closely with Mike Thompson and JFC on this to um, get everything cleaned up all lots, as you guys know, it was an existing sub or an existing site. There are six buildings out there um, due to the subdivision split. Now having three lots out there, all the utilities will need to be rerouted so that they serve each lot individually. Um, this of course triggers the subdivision improvements agreement, which was sent out to you guys um, late yesterday afternoon. Um, we got that signed and also there was um, having to have financial guarantee to back up the subdivision improvements agreement. Um, there has been a bond that has been um, created for this use, for lack of a better term. Um, we'll jump right into uh, the rest of it. We've posted this multiple times for public notice. And the only agency that we had to that commented back at this time for the final plat process was Kinder Morgan, and they don't have any facilities in the area and have no concerns. Um, the land use staff had several um, comments originally that needed to be addressed at this time. Um, I don't really want to bore you with this. I'll just uh, circle back around to how we got to where we're at today. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do in order to help um, people in the future and just make sure a chain of title on this property was in fact showing that Smith International does own the property. We requested that certificates of merger be recorded at the courthouse. Um, 
what ended up happening was affidavits with these certificates of merger attached to them is what got recorded um, here at the courthouse. And subsequently, the books and pages were noted on the plat uh, just to make it easier for everybody to kind of show chain of title with everything. Um, and as you guys saw by email, via email last night, and I've provided uh, packets for you to look at uh, hard copy prior to this meeting, the subdivision improvements agreement was also signed on behalf of Mike Thompson yesterday. And um, the bond was also signed and notarized. It was amended slightly um, yesterday to um, add the construction approval approval date, which will be February 15th of next year. It has a one year period to get all these um, infrastructure installed and approved. Um, and this is basically where we got at today. I'm not gonna bore you with the um, previous planning and zoning recommendations at the time of our planning and zoning meeting last week, we did have three um, conditions for approval that they recommended with a four to zero vote. The first was having those merger documents be recorded. Those did, did get recorded um, last Thursday. The subdivision improvements agreement was also executed. So we now have everything that we need so that the staff can comfortably um, recommend approval for um, the Lagoon subdivision. One thing that I do wanna make note is that we would request that there's also to be included in the motion that um, we authorize the Board of County Commissioner Chairman to also sign the subdivision improvements agreement and also on the bond, as well as approving the final plat for Lagoon subdivision. And that's all I have, Commissioner Lloyd. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for, for Megan? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Um, Mr. Wendling. Yeah, Megan, um, have uh, all the conditions are now just so we'd say it, there's no uh, recommended conditions with with this now. That is correct. As of yesterday, late afternoon, all the commission or all the conditions that we had originally recommended for approval have been met. So okay. um, there's been a revised resolution that has no conditions on it and is also a recommendation for approval. That's Thank correct. You. Thank you. Any uh, any other questions? If not, let's, I'm going to invite um, our planning and zoning director, um, Eric Bingham, to make some comments. Mr. Chairman, just wanted to acknowledge that Mike Thompson is on the Zoom call and he is representative of Schlumberger. Okay, thank you. And he's on the screen, correct? Okay. We'll turn the floor to Mike. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Mike Thompson with Slumberjay. Um, I don't really have any further comments. We've been working with closely with Megan and Eric alongside JFC uh, to kind of get this moving along. Mike, we can't hear you if you're speaking. Oh, can you guys hear me now? So. Are you guys able to hear me now? I'm just in the chat. Yeah. My name's we'll Casey. just give it another few seconds and then we'll move forward. My name is Casey Smith. And I'm also here on representation for Mike Thompson. Okay. JFC. Will you once again speak into the mic and and we'll go and uh, share, once again share who you are and Casey Smith representing Mike Thompson on behalf of JFC. Okay. okay. If you guys have any questions? I can. Um, Commission, do you have any questions for Mr. Smith representing Mr. Thompson? Okay. Thank At this point, thank you, Mr. Smith, for coming up. With that being said, we will open it up for, um, um, well, do we need to open this up for public comment, Mr. Bingham? We need to open this up for public comment. Okay, so we'll open it up at this point for public comment.
seeing none, we'll go ahead and close it at this time. All right, uh, commissioners. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 22-02-0-2, the Slumber J Final Plat Lagoon Subdivision and authorize the chairman also to sign any other documents that are needed with regard to the bond and subdivision improvements agreement and subdivision approvement agreement. Second. Moved and seconded by uh, Commissioner Wendling and Shanefeld. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor, please vote with an aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes, so thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. Once again, want to reiterate and thank the planning and zoning department for their work. We saw lots of moving parts over the last four days and want to thank anyone, everyone involved for moving that through. So up next um, is a time for county resident comments and concerns. At this time, we will open the floor for uh, comments um, from our county residents. Um, we do ask that as you come to the, um, to the podium that you introduce yourself, who you're representing, and, um, and at that point, we'll hear your comments. So do we have any county resident concerns and uh, comments at this point? All right, come on up. All right, I'm Bud Allen. I'm the District Executive for the Boy Scouts of America. Um, in Sweetwater County and the surrounding areas. And April Ecker is one of our district committee volunteers. Uh, we just wanted to readdress some issues that I guess have come up recently in regards to the scouts potentially using um, Pioneer Trails picnic grounds for uh, a couple of events over the coming summer. Um, in the past, for the past several years, we've used that facility and it, it works out marvelously for some of our training events in particular. And we just wanted to clarify um, what, how many people would be involved. The question is, is the overnight use. And we just wanted to provide some more detailed information. Is it all right if I give you each a sheet of paper that has that information? That would be fine. Thank you. Shows the key information here tonight would be the question used out there. And the number of people are crossing the number of people each of those nights and so you can see the it's really low there's a total of seven nights involved in the three events and four of those nights the number of people that would be out there is, is in single digits um it's usually just it would just be one or two campers that would be there um setting up for daytime activities or to be there with equipment that was set up um, for daytime activities most for most of those nights so yeah, we're talking three night or three people, three people, four people, eight people, and a few more than that on, on, on three of the nights that there'd actually be a few scouts out there. So would, our hope was that that would provide some more information and say, yeah, our impact is gonna be really minimal. Um, we've had a good record of, of keeping things clean and keeping things orderly out there. Um, and so we hope we can work that out to, to use that facility for those nights this coming summer. Any questions or other concerns? Fellow commissioners, any questions for Mr. Allen? Do you have anything you wanna add? Um, also to- Will you please speak into the microphone and introduce yourself? Also to the majority of us scouts and the scout leaders, we are leave no trace educated. So all of our policies and practices, we do do that. We also make sure that the park is a lot cleaner than what we found it. Um, our service project, whenever we do use that facility is to walk through the whole entire area with trash bags and picking up trash that other people has left there. So that way the park is clean when we do leave. Okay. Any other questions for the Boy Scouts? Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Um, Commissioner Toman. I guess we voted last meeting not to approve it based on our uh, public works director, Gene Ligurski. He's just afraid of the impact to the grass when you have like 50 tents or 50 campers. And that's, and that, that, that's exactly what we wanted to address is that's not what's going to be the case. Eight people don't need 50 tents. <laughs> no, but 50 and 30 people. Yeah. On, 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 we have, we have, had event, have had events out there where we have had 
50 plus people, scouts out there. We have, um, we're not, we weren't planning to do any of those this year. Um, and so I don't know the number, I don't know how even one night of 50 people out there isn't going to have any more impact than, than one event in the Bowery or anything anyway. And that's the marvelous thing about the, the facility is to have that Bowery. Yes, there are other, we have lots of public lands and lots of opportunities, places we can do some of our activities, some of our events and activities, but to have that Bowery just works out great for a training situation or for our Cub Scout activities where we're doing crafts and various things and having the picnic tables um, in, a, in a somewhat sheltered situation in case of inclement weather. So yeah, the, the, the majority of, the, of that use is right there in the Bowery um, and on the sand and the, the immediate traffic areas right there in the area. Um, just in time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, that, that I don't think we are, the impact even on those nights wouldn't be any higher than having 50 people out there for another event, another activity in that big Bowery anyway. Um, any other questions um, or um, uh, Commissioner Sheinfeld? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know too that the the um, none of our parks are allowed for overnight camping anyway, and so we felt that making an exception would potentially open the doors for additional camping. We also had discussion. I don't know if you guys watched the meeting, but discussion around. Um, the fact that others may see you camped there, um, probably would see you camped there and think that it's okay to overnight camp there. Um, and so I, I think that at this point, I mean, we, we did make that vote. Um, and then we also um, had discussion that obviously the, the um, site is open for you all the way until dusk. Right. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys can make that work or not, but I, th those are just things from the discussion that we had at the last meeting that I wanted right. to make sure to raise. And so, so ha have there been any issues as far as I understand the issues? I wasn't aware that the other meeting was happening until after so I talked to Commissioner Col Tolman and found out afterward. Um, but have there been any issues that people have been out there camping because they saw us out there previous? We've done it for a number of years. Last year, we were out there a number of times. You know, Mr. Allen, I can't answer that question, but um, I would recommend if um, if this is something you'd like to us to, rec um, to relook at a formal decision to put it on the next agenda, um, because we probably wouldn't make that decision today. But uh, as of last week, we did make the decision based upon the reasons that Commissioner Shanefeld gave. And if you'd like us to reconsider, you could put it on the agenda. Okay. But, um, to, but to be honest, uh, we appreciate your input and in coming to share today. But we wouldn't be able to make the change to that decision unless, there, in my opinion, unless it was formally on the agenda to discuss. And um, and and I'll just, yeah, that's where I'll leave it at this point. All right. Any other questions or comments from my fellow commissioners? The, the, and then the numbers of people that are on there, if you take that number and you split it in half, and that's actually the amount of tents that you're going to have, because we have either two yeah. people or two cubbies per tent. So if it says 50, it's only 25. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, maybe we should let Mr. Ligurski. What's that? Maybe we should let Mr. Ligurski address it. Uh, one more time. Maybe we should let Mr. Ligurski address this um, as he's the one yeah, we can, familiar. Yeah, and uh, we did hear from Mr. Ligurski last week, but we'll open it up to Mr. Ligurski. Gene, you've been requested, so. Well, only if you have something you want to add. But like I said, I don't think we can make a formal redecision unless it was on the agenda to have that discussion. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to bring this up in another agenda item, that's fine. And I can yeah. speak on that. That's but true. but in your opinion, things have not changed since the last meeting. No, I've actually had more information like in the February Jamboree that they had 50 people out there um, staying overnight. <laughs> um, you know, it isn't the fact they do a great job. They clean up just like they said. But we have no overnight camping in our parks. So you guys will have to make a change to do that. And it can't be just no overnight camping for one specific group. Yeah. If you guys want to open it up to everybody, we'll open it up to overnight camping in all of our parks. It's fine. We will just need to monitor the parks and, you know, and have everybody clean up and do that stuff. So we'll talk about it next week. Thank you. Thank you. And that's if they do bring it back. So thank you. Any other county resident comments, concerns? Cindy, anything coming through? Anyone else from the audience? All right, with that, we'll move forward. Uh, Tabby, 
will be a request of the approval of the 2022 Volunteer Fire Assistant Grant Agreement. And to make that presentation will be Christina Marshall and um, Warden Mike Bernasian. Good morning. Good morning. This will be nice and short again. So Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, Sweetwater County was awarded $7,500 in volunteer fire assistance grant funding from the Wyoming Office of State Lands and Investments Forestry Division. This grant requires a cash match of 50% on the total project and it expires on May 30th, 2022. So the purpose of this funding is actually specifically to support um, rural areas and communities with a population of 10,000 or fewer inhabitants to prevent and suppress rural fires and enhance protection capabilities. Uh, the grant award will be used to purchase uh, miscellaneous wildland fire equipment that will improve the capability of the firefighters to suppress fires at the Sweetwater County Fire Department. So as I've listed, uh, the project was uh, proposed by the County Fire Warden to purchase miscellaneous items such as a hose and apparatus pressure washer, fire shelters and cases, fire pants, remote front monitor, joystick and mounting enclosure, and um, scuba masks and bag. As a note, the required cash match for this project uh, was uh, included in the fiscal year 2022 grant projects budget. There's no other estimated budgetary impacts. Uh, the proposed equipment was not included in the fire department's regular fiscal year 2022 uh, budget. And I have the fireman, fire warden ready to discuss in detail this project. If you have any questions, um, one final note, if this is passed, uh, Mr. Chairman, you would need to manually cross out the name listed in the contract and just write your name in there as acting chairman. Sally, okay. you may have to guide me. <laughs> and with I'm, that, honest. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any questions or would you like uh, Mike Bernasium to come up? Um, I'd like to open the floor to uh, give um, uh, Warden Bernasian a chance. Is there anything you want to share with regard to this? And if you don't have anything, that's all right, too. If she's covered it well, your call. Okay. Yeah. Morning, Mike. Good morning, everybody. I come before you every year with this grant. Um, and based on some questions I had last year, um, wanting specifics, I have specifics uh, for for certain items. The, the pressure washer is a replacement. It's not a new addition to the fire station. Our current one has been, it's the point where it doesn't pressure much at all. And the heater unit doesn't work in it. The shop's worked on it a couple of times for us. Um, <clears throat> the uh, fire shelters are pretty pricey. Uh, we send those back to be repackaged. They have to be repackaged after so many years. And a couple of them failed inspection by the official federal inspector. So that's why we're looking to replace those. And then uh, replacing some wildland pants. Uh, once they get a tear larger than a quarter inch, uh, we have to take them out of service. And that's extremely unfortunate because they're so expensive. <laughs> and uh, we've got a couple new uh, seasonals and who have now switched over to volunteers. And uh, a male and a female with very small faces. And we have to order some small uh, masks for them as we don't have any currently. So I hope that answers any questions you may have. Oh, the monitor, that's for uh, the military six by six truck and only seats two people. So that when we designed to upfit that truck, this is an item we, we foresaw then two years ago to put on that truck so they can fight fire from the cab. Since they can only carry two people, it's much safer to do so if it's put into a firefighting role and not a support role. So, and I'm open to any questions you may have. Uh, I'll open it up now to any of my fellow commissioners for questions for Ms. Marshall or Warden Bernadine. Seeing no questions, um, uh, what's your guys's um, want a direction for these this request? Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yes, Mr. Uh, Wendling. 
I'll make a motion that we approve and authorize the acting chairman to sign the 2022 volunteer fire assistance grant agreement. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Shanfeld. All in favor with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Sorry, I, I forgot to ask for discussion, but we're going to move forward. So <laughs> I don't think there was. So with that, motion passes. Thank you, um, Ms. Purcell and Mr. Morizian for presenting. Thank you today. very much. Have a good day. Be safe. Have great days. One final comment. Yes. Go, go Pokes tonight. Go Pokes, number 22 <laughs> in the country. So, hey, uh, way to bring sunshine to our day. So thanks, Eric. All right. Up next was tab F and G, which would be Devin Brubaker. He was... um. Jeff did say that he reached out to him and um, he may be, he will be joining us by uh, Zoom, but could be late today um, and would need to be a little bit later based upon a previous commitment. So with that being said, um, um, that does take up to our next items. Mr. Um, Chairman. Through uh, the sheriff. So yes, uh, Mr. Wendling. Yeah, um, Clerk Lane. There's a chat. Will you check the chat? Oh, very good. Thank you. Okay, very good. So, Thank you. So a couple of recommendations I can make at this point. We could take an early break until Devin arrives, or we could actually move on to, um, um, I would say we could move on to commissioner comments um, and get that done just because we do have a gap in time and there's no one else here to present at that point. What would the, what would the commit my fellow commissioners want to do? Mr. Chairman, I'd recommend taking a break. Okay. Everyone good with that? All right. We will go ahead and take a, we'll go a 15, a 20, 15 minute break. We'll be back at, it's a little more than 15, but we'll go back, be back at nine 45. Thank you.
commissioners ready okay I'll bring us back into um, session. Um, we're still waiting for Devin on Zoom. So with permission, I'd like to jump to tab I um, um, because tab G has been um, taken off um, and we're waiting for Devin for E and F. And I'm uh, sorry, tab H has been taken off and jump to tab I, which would be our sheriff, John Grossnickel. Uh, and he'll be presenting on the 2022 annual operating and financial plan between the County of Sweetwater and the USDA Forest Service, Ashley National Forest. So John, I'll turn it over to you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, sure. thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is our annual contract with the US uh, Forest Service for our uh, overtime uh, during the summer to patrol the Flaming Gorge. Uh, Sergeant Powell's done a great job since we've implemented uh, more patrols down there last year. Thank goodness we had no major incidents of uh, uh, death or uh, personal bodily injury. I think that's the first time we haven't had a major incident in a lot of years that I can remember. So this is just the, the $6,000 that the Forest Service pays us to contract out so we can have uh, enforcement down there during the summer. Okay. Hello, Commissioners. Any questions for Sheriff Grossnickel? Yes. Go ahead, Commissioner Tolman. It says something about back page. That means you can draw on that last year, that, or not back pay, but the amount that was not spent last year can still be used this year? Correct. It, 19800 it, It'll roll over. That just hasn't been uh, billed out yet. That, that happens oh. almost every year. That oh, okay. it, it takes a while for the federal government to build that out. Okay. Any other questions from the, from the board? With no other questions, uh, do I have, what is the commission's want to do with modification number 003, exhibit A, cooperative law enforcement annual operating plan and financial plan between Sweetwater County of, and the USDA Forest National uh, Forest Service, Ashley National Forest. Um, commissioners, what's your favor? Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Wendling. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve that and authorize the acting chairman to sign. I like the sounds of that. Um, do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to second. Second by uh, Commissioner Tolman. All in favor uh, with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. Not opposed, uh, approve. Okay, Sorry. so that is full. That approves, just to, to doubt the questions, it is 4-0. Um, it does approve. Thank you very much. Thank you, commissioners. Have a good day. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Please pass along to your guys. Thank you very much. And, and that, I, I don't think we've talked to you personally since uh, the day of the incident when the board was under siege yes. at the courthouse. But uh, please tell your responding um, officers, thank you very much. And thank you for all your support. And uh, when the uh, assessment is completed, um, we'll look forward to a report and see what we can do to better prepare ourselves to respond for such a situation. I appreciate that and I will pass that along. We have great men and women that work for we us. Do. So I Thank appreciate you. that. Tell them to be safe. I will. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Thank you, Sheriff Grossnickel. Since we don't have Devin, I think we'll go ahead and move on to tab J, which would be, if, um, which would be Janessa Meredith and the Sweetwater County Travel and Tourism Annual Report 2021 and Tourism Master Plan. So turn the floor over to Janessa. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I got a question right away for Ms. Meredith. Yes, yes. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Valentine. Is this Happy Valentine's Day or Christmas? A little bit of a treat, and Christmas, and New Year's, and Flag Day. <laughs> I always look forward to your visits because you always bring us something special, Janessa. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Let me try and get this going real quick. Okay. You can turn it to that. Yeah, that's fine. It's good. It's good stuff. Yes. Good morning, Commissioner. Right away. <laughs> Straight to the chapstick. <laughs> and the good pens. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can bring more. 
Well, yes, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm excited to share with you our 2021 annual report. So as you know, this is how the local option lodging tax was spent. So I'll go over it briefly with you. Um, as you know, the lodging tax board is made up of 11 volunteer board members. Six of them come from the city of Rock Springs, two from Green River, one from Wamsetter, one from Superior, and one's appointed by the county commission. So it's a volunteer board um, that is charged with administering the local option lodging tax, which is currently a 4% local option lodging tax. And the entire mission of the lodging tax board is to put heads in beds to generate hotel occupancy in Sweetwater County. Um, as you know, every four years, the local option lodging tax has to be reauthorized by local voters. So this is an election year, 2022, it'll be on the ballot. Um, it's different this year. In the past, it was solely a local option lodging tax at 4%. Um, since our last election, there has been a statewide lodging tax imposed, started being collected in 2021. So it's a 5% statewide lodging tax, which actually replaces two of our local option lodging tax percentages um, to where that does not go before the local voters. At this time, only the additional 2% to keep us whole at 4% will go before the local voters. So as you know, the lodging tax is paid by people staying in the hotels and campgrounds. So local folks benefit from it, from the marketing of events and, and the economic impact that we see from those events. So it's the, the tax that we don't pay that we benefit from dramatically. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Winley. Ms. Meredith, can we ask questions as you present? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, one of the questions that often comes up is, is does the tax stay on or come off when a business stays at a motel and it's a long-term stay? The 30-day rule, yep. There used to be part of the state statute indicated that if you stayed longer than 30 days, you were not charged that tax. That was changed by an amendment in recent years. So what does that amendment say now? It says that you're charged for tax the entire Beyond time. the 30 days. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, also, our location has changed recently. As you know, in 2020, we moved to Elk Street. 1641 Elk Street. So we had an office in downtown Rock Springs for 12 years before that, which was fine. We contracted with the chambers to provide visitor services. So we just had an office for the administrative and marketing functions, but we wanted to be on Elk Street. We wanted to be on Highway 191 leading to the national parks. That's, that's where most of those travelers come through our county. And we wanted to be able to slow them down and, and give us a chance to show them what's great about Sweetwater County. So that building became available and we were able to um, lease it. We've been in there since 2020 and it's been fantastic for, for us to be able to showcase the area to visitors. Um, this is the budget breakdown. So by state statute, the local option lodging tax has to be spent on marketing and promotional efforts. We can't build an attraction. We can't build um, anything um, like a Disneyland or a Disney World or a a zip lining park or anything fun like that. It's all for marketing and promotions, which is great. So 79% of the budget is our traditional marketing campaign, which I'll show you here briefly. Um, and then 7% goes to event grants, 3% uh, to the chambers of commerce, 3% to the events complex and 8% to administration. So you can see as a lodging tax collection has come in over the years, we've changed our rate. Um, initially since 1991, we were at 2%. Collection, the highest you can go is 4%. So starting in 1991, it was collected at 2% all the way until 2014. So in 2014, we asked the local voters to increase to 3%. Um, and then in 2018, we asked them to increase it to that 4%, that full amount. Most every um, destination around the state has been at 4% long before we ever were. So it was definitely time. And you can see that we're collecting around a million. We did see, um, a decrease with COVID-19, but not substantial compared to a lot of areas around the state and country. So we feel good about that. The block grants that I mentioned to the chambers and the events complex, we help the chambers provide visitor services. We help them with their staffing. They distribute brochures for us. They do a lot of things for us. It's a really great partnership. And then we also partner with the Sweetwater Events Complex, um, help them with their out-of-county advertising and event recruitment. So the event grants, that 7% of our budget, um, as you know, any event in the county that's hosted by a nonprofit entity, 
uh, that generates hotel or campground occupancy qualifies for lodging tax dollars. So we give up to $6,000 per event. So Wyoming's Big Show, the River Festival, Flaming Gorge Days, every sporting event that you can think of for our youth, um, conferences, conventions, hockey, most everything you can think of is, is receiving lodging tax dollars if it's hosted by a nonprofit event. So we consider those applications quarterly. So if anyone is interested, they can go to our website at tourwyoming.com. And at the very bottom, it says grant information. You can get more information on that. We also work to recruit international tour groups to our area. We partner with a group called Rocky Mountain International to meet with tour operators from around the world. Uh, we partner with regional states to market ourselves as a Western um, item on, on an itinerary that's sold around the world. And then most recently we recruited state high school soccer, both boys and girls, 3A and 4A, will be hosted here in 2023 and 2024, which total is a $6 million economic impact. I'm really proud of this in the fact that we were able to bring together both Rock Springs and Green River high schools to collect how many fields that we have, look at our inventory, look at our turf, realize that we're the place to host these events. And we went for all of it, two years for boys and girls, 3A and 4A, being able to work together with both communities has really, really been awesome. So super excited to be able to host that next year and the year after. So that was a big win. Um, committees and boards. Um, as you know, I either serve on or host a number of committees um, or boards in the state and in the county. Just really proud to do whatever we can to promote tourism. Also, I'll touch briefly on the Sweetwater County Tourism Master Plan. So in 2021, we did a strategic planning, no, 2020, we did a strategic planning session, just kind of getting our ducks in a row. Where are we at with the pandemic? What does tourism look like for the future? Uh, but we knew we needed to flesh that out in greater detail. So we hired a consultant to create a tourism master plan. So this is it's intended to be a five-year plan. Some of the elements go into 10 and 20 and beyond um, long-term project goals. But the master plan um, was done collectively with every partner that we have in the county, um, all elected officials, um, Game and Fish, BLM, Forest Service, all of our landowners were included in the process. And a lot of research was done um, before we even started having conversations. So the consultant collected 31 local guiding documents. So any strategic plan that existed in the county, um, municipalities, the chambers, economic development, uh, the events complex, our tourism master plans, Wyoming Game and Fish, the BLM, YDOT, um, every master plan that we could get our hands on in the county was considered. So he went through all of those plans and looked for common themes, common ideas, common goals, what rose to the top, or were more than one entity thinking was a priority. Um, we invited many of you um, and other local leaders to serve on a steering committee that met in person twice with the consultant going over these um, plans and the research and prioritizing. We also conducted two different surveys, one of local residents. Um, so 297 local residents were surveyed uh, based on what do you like to do in the area, what are our most high quality attractions? Um, what should we showcase? What should we not? What needs most work? Things like that. And we did the same for visitors. Anyone who's come to the area and requested a travel guide, we sampled that group and surveyed 285 visitors on whether they would return and what their thoughts were. I'll go over this in greater detail at a later date, just because it'll take more time than what we have today. But these were the... Um, the strategic issues that came to the surface um, that needed work and that we wanted to make part of this plan. So partnerships and collaboratives, as you know, are just, it's just critical. If we can't all work together, everyone's working in a different direction on different things. We don't get as much accomplished. So that's gotta, gotta be our number one goal. Outdoor recreation became the absolute top uh, priority in everything that we saw. All of those um, guiding documents mentioned outdoor recreation as our top opportunity, our top um, resource that we have here. Attractions and amenities, um, indoor, outdoor facilities are critical um, to moving forward with our tourism master plan. 
and then travel industry infrastructure, just making sure that we're supporting the industry, um, hospitality industry here locally. So the plan is long. I've shared it with you. Um, I'll go into more detail, like I said, at a later date, uh, but I wanted to pull out some of the key elements for you to consider um, from here forward. And then um, I'll give you a lot more detail in the future. Um, as you know, this past summer, we were able to launch our Flaming Gorge bus tours, which were awesome. Um, it's a full day guided tour around Flaming Gorge. Um, we've wanted to do this for a long time. Uh, when folks come to the area, they want to be guided. They want someone to show them around and um, not have to go out and explore and find it on their own. So we hired Lucy Diggins-Wold, who's just phenomenal. She was with the Game and Fish for 27 years. She's just phenomenal. She's our tour guide. So we hosted almost 200 passengers last summer, um, all five-star reviews on TripAdvisor. So really excited to be able to host it again this summer. We have 28 tours scheduled, mainly on Thursdays and Saturdays. So if you're interested, jump on our website. Tickets are already available. So it should be a great summer. Um, this is new. <laughs> this is new. Um, sandboarding. So if you have been to Great Sand Dunes National Park or other sand dune fields around the country, world, um, sandboarding is a thing. And I didn't know. I didn't realize that it was a thing. Now we know. Now, now we know. So what's unfortunate is when folks want to go and explore the Killpicker sand dunes, if they don't have an ATV, we don't have a rental vendor available. So what are we going to have them do? Because it's epic. You've been out there. It's phenomenal. Um, it's so impressive. I just, I could stay out there forever. So we wanted to figure out a way to make it easily accessible to all ages, families traveling through the area. So this summer we will likely be renting sandboards. $25 a day. Um, they're fun. They're fun. I've done it. I've done the sandboard stand up and the sled where you sit down. So you have options. Um, <laughs> I feel like sledding might be <laughs> Right. If you've snowboarded, if you're a snowboarder, this comes so naturally. Everyone who's a snowboarder, they're just like, oh, yeah, and I'm not. <laughs> so it wasn't pretty. There's videos to prove that I am not good at this sport, but it's a good time. So um, I'll get you more information on that as it as it develops, but it then should I be, suppose it should... they're going to want lifts to get into the top of the sand right? pile. <laughs> yep. You got to be in good shape for sure. I always recommend yeah. sharing a board. Don't just get your own. Cause then you're just going to be up and down and up and down. Just share You just need one board. <laughs> yeah. It's a workout. Be a real good heel buffer too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Stop the dead skin. Um, board projects that was on my pie chart as well. So any project that benefits tourism in the area that doesn't fall under another category, we consider for funding this actually, we didn't contribute a dime, just ideas to this. So when the Tiffin um, motor coach rally was in town, go RVing shot a commercial for the Adams family Two movie. I'm hoping I can show it to you here in a second, but the scout came into the visitor center and was asking for a location where he could showcase a number of, of motor coaches, like where's a flat area that's scenic. And he had showed me some photos of what he found on the Utah side of Flaming Gorge, which were beautiful, but I enlightened him as to where a better spot might be. And luckily he believed me and went with it. <laughs> I'll show you, this isn't the commercial, but this is a YouTube version. Awesome. That is great. <laughs> it's 
So you recognize that as Firehole Canyon. It was right next to On Swim Beach, right next to Firehole Campground. So yeah, I went, I measured, I scouted, I videoed it, I sent it to them and they, they chose it. Those um, scenes were shot through the night. So really, really cool. Um, really, really proud of that. Um, also, as you know, the Flaming Gorge Scenic Byway is a real priority of ours. Um, and we were recently designated as an all-American road, which is a lot of people don't understand why that matters. Um, and it matters because if a scenic byway is designated as a national scenic byway or an all-American road, they qualify for federal highway administration funds and other funding opportunities. So that designation really will open some doors for us to be able to secure funding to build turnouts and restrooms and uh, interpretive signage and guided paths and so on. So really excited about that. We showcased that on um, KUTV2 News this summer. Many of you attended that ribbon cutting um, and I have a clip of that as well. The following segment is sponsored by Explore Rock Springs and Green River, Wyoming. Thanks a bunch, ladies. It's been an absolute blast. Road trip in Sweetwater County, Wyoming story. And uh, it's been a big day for you, okay? We just did the ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, Janissa's poured her heart and soul into this project. Did you get a little emotional out there? A little bit. It's a big deal. The Flaming Gorge Green River Basin All-American Road designation. We didn't think this day would come one of only 37 All-American roads in the nation. The Wyoming half of the Flaming Gorge Byway, it's really special and we always know, we've always known it's really special, but to be able to showcase it to the world in this way is really an exciting day. I was raised by school teachers, so I was taught to soak up as much as I could at any single point. I got to admit, I didn't have a very good understanding showing up here today. You have left me with a phenomenal understanding. Um, maybe give a shout out to some of the people who shed some blood, sweat and tears along with you. Absolutely. It's been a group effort. It's not one person. It's a, a village of people. Um, our, our public landowners, uh, the BLM, the Forest Service, YDOT, our private industry, the Red Canyon Lodge, um, Lucerne Valley Marina. We have so many great partners and we could not have done it without all of us together. Okay, so the reason we're on the bus, back on the bus, is because guided tours are going to be a new thing. Couldn't resist a little more FaceTime with Lucy, uh, who's going to be the face of, of, of the tour. What's exciting about your new venture? I mean, you get to entertain and talk to people. And again, back to education, they get to get an education. out. Yeah, they sure do. And, you know, going from game and fish working out here, and now I get to help people appreciate it even more. I'm excited to be out here with these people. I, I always took it for granted, but I get people get so excited out here and really looking forward to doing that. Okay, with your background in game and fish in 27 years is incredibly significant. Tell me about some of the rocks. Tell me about the lay of the land, the plants and the wildlife that you get to see. Are you saying I'm old? Yeah. yeah. Are you saying I'm old? <laughs> well, no. Yeah. I mean, when you talk to people about billions of years of geology, it's been a little bit of a challenge for me, but there's tons of bighorn sheep, elk, mule deer, elk, uh, just lots to see out here. It's not going to be that difficult. Okay. Yeah. The flowers are in bloom. They'll be there all summer. And this is a comfortable bus. And I know you're going to specialize in making people comfortable when they're on here, including food and including beverages. What's on the lunch menu, if you don't want me to ask? Yeah. Yep. Well, we eat at Red Canyon Lodge and, it, and it's uh, soup and salad. It's a buffet. He's got his hummingbird feeder set up and you sit there and watch them. It's, it's just a pleasant place. Got a little kid fishing pond. We got donuts from Cowboy Donuts, bottled water, of course. And they can also buy things at the visitor centers that we stop at. So. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we're running just a tiny bit short on time. Um, again, I get it. You know, this is something that deserves to be celebrated and it deserves to be seen. We got a lot of people in Utah, which is not that far away, but sometimes just the way our minds work, it can seem like it's a long ways away. But you've got the audience that we're dealing with right now at home. Tell them to get out here and take advantage of this and where they can find information to plan a perfect trip. Absolutely. Explorewy.com is the website. Come and explore Flaming Gorge Country. And if you want to be guided, if you want to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the view, take a tour with Lucy. $49 a person, full day tour guided with lunch included at Red Canyon Lodge. You can't beat it. Okay. I tell you, the best part of this new gig for me, road tripping, has been meeting people like you. I feel like I've made new friends everywhere I've gone. Thanks a bunch. Have a good morning, ladies. This has been a blast. The following segment is. So we'll partner with them again this summer, which will be exciting. But yeah, reach a really large audience with that KUTV2 News partnership. So hope to continue that in the future. It works really well for us. Yes. How many people did the tour this year? 
200. Mm -hmm. my, my mom and her friend did it and they had a blast. So. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Honestly, we've gotten all, I mean, knock on wood, all five-star reviews. It's just, she's when amazing. When does it we start? Love her. When do you start again? It'll start in June, yeah. Thursdays and Saturdays, the majority of the summer. Yep. It's going to be awesome. Um, then just to show you some of our marketing materials, our travel guide, which is in your bag, there you have, um, our restaurant and dining guide is new. The cover of that is new, just featuring kind of the local favorites. It's a really popular little dining guide as well. Um, and these are some of our digital print out of home elements. Um, so like it showed 79% of our budget goes to out of county marketing. So the int entire intention is to generate visitation to our area. So a lot of times locals don't see our advertisements unless they follow us on social media. So that's kind of a snapshot of some of that. Um, we only shoot video every two to three years based on budget. So we were able to shoot video this past summer and it's phenomenal. The technology with uh, the new cameras and the drone images, it's impressive. So this is our new two minute video. <laughs> yeah. In Southwest Wyoming, adventure is waiting. This is how we explore it in Sweetwater County. Discover classic Western towns like Rock Springs, where vibrant art meets natural history. Visit Green River, where the water kisses rock in an outdoor adventure haven. Make the drive and tee off your journey while surrounded by breathtaking landscape. Let your spirit run wild through the Flaming Gorge National Recreation Area and discover endless high desert hidden gems. Spark your senses among rare singing sand dunes. Stand in the shadows of giants formed over centuries and trek pristine trails to wide open space. Let authentic flavors lead you somewhere delicious and connect with the tastemakers who call Southwest Wyoming home. Venture out on two wheels to see this land for yourself where memories are measured in miles explored. And gather with the ones you love beneath the bright lights at unforgettable events. Here, you can get off the grid with the people that matter most. Travel safe and stay informed while adventuring responsibly in Rock Springs and Green River. Plan your adventure at explorewy.com. I love that. <laughs> good. Very good. Thank you. It very turned out really good. nice. Uh, we don't usually use that two minute um, video. It plays at the chambers on a loop and in our visitor center on a loop. So there's a bunch of 15 second and 30 second videos by subject on our website. If you want to check them out under the gallery, they're up and live right now. Um, just segmented based on subject, but um, next in the report is the reach awards. So that tourism industry um, support and infrastructure, we wanna make sure that when we're spending all of this money to generate visitation to our area, that when they get here, they have a really good experience. So we recognize um, the folks that are working on the front lines and the hotels and restaurants and retail outlets and make sure that if they're providing customer service in a really high quality way, that they're recognized and thanked for their efforts. So we've been doing the REACH Awards since 2008, it stands for rare and exceptional achievement for customer service and hospitality. So I want to make sure those folks really understand how much they mean to the industry. We also started a customer service program last year. It's called the Certified Tourism Ambassador Program. It's an international program. So we've hired that firm to come in and teach us how and, and develop the, the program. So we currently have almost 70 certified tourism ambassadors locally, which is a lot. I feel like these are folks that are really passionate about tourism in our area, really advocate for uh, people visiting here and exploring while they're in the area and staying longer. So I'm excited to continue that program. It's um, $39 a person. If you sign up more than 
five or more people, it's $29 a person. It has two components. One of them, one component is to teach you about the area, uh, make you an expert on tourism attractions in the area and what makes this place special. And the other component is just really customer service skills, teaching people how to provide really high quality customer service. And then we always measure our marketing efforts. Um, in the past, all we were able to afford to measure was the travel guide. So um, with our increased budget and some CARES Act funding, we were able to um, do additional research the past two years. So this is measuring the impact of all of our advertising, print, digital, travel guide, out of home, all of our marketing was measured. Um, and we know that the advertising just that we placed, just placed by Sweetwater County Travel and Tourism, um, influenced almost $1.2 million in visitor spending, over 74,000 visits. Those visits averaged 2.8 people per party. Um, they stayed in our area an average of 3.1 days and engaged in 4.2 activities. So the return on investment for every $1 that we spent to market to those folks, um, to the local economy was $454. So really a big deal, much different than what we were measuring before. We just didn't have a way to really know those impacts. So. So as you can see, tourism is a big deal for Sweetwater County and I'm really honored to be a part of it and I really appreciate all of your support over the years and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Can you clarify? Go ahead. Can you clarify that lodging tax? Tell me what the state one does again. It's a 5% statewide lodging tax. So currently Sweetwater County is collecting 7%. 5% of the statewide, ours is four, but it replaced two of theirs replaced two of ours. So that made us at seven, does that make sense? So we are asking local voters to keep us whole for that 2% to make us the total of four. 2% is now still under the five with the state, can be only changed by the legislature. So we need the extra 2% to keep us whole at 4% by the local vote. So the state's gonna keep the 3%. Then. That's what funds the Wyoming Office of Tourism. Oh, yep. okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, they used to be, um, their funding came out of the general fund and they wanted a designated funding stream. So they were able to get that statewide lodging tax a few years ago. Yep. Thank you. Welcome. Janessa, thank you so much for your presentation. I will open it up for uh, any other comments from my fellow commissioners, but just a couple of comments um, from what I consider my past life before I became a commissioner and I could actually feel like I was community involved. I'm always a huge fan on the grant program and um, was able to use that program, as you know, for multiple different things I was involved with and saw great impacts to the community and think those partnerships are what help promote what we do. And I've always said, as we look at economic development, really the most easy and uh, the most convenient one we already kind of have ready to roll is travel and tourism by increasing what we do. So always been a big fan of that and those grants. Um, heard nothing but positive reviews on the uh, tours and think that was a great thing. And also have a good friend of mine just went through the tourism ambassador program and spoke very highly of it. So very great to see us going out and doing some inventive, creative things. And the last thing is, I don't think I will other snowboard, but I would take pictures of uh, Cesar Divas doing it because I think that could be enjoyable. <laughs> but um, outside of that, any other comments for Janessa, but for myself, just appreciate you and the board and your team for what they do and what they bring to Sweetwater County. So Thank you. any other comments for my fellow commissioners this morning? Thank oh, you. Just good job. Thank right. you very Thank much. Thank you, Janessa. Thank you. All right, that we're going to go backwards now and go back because I see um, um, our good friend from the airport, Devin Brubaker, is on Zoom, and um, and uh, Devin's got a couple things for us. Uh, uh, the FFA grant agreement, Rock Springs and MG356. So we'll get the rest of the numbers here in a little bit. And the airport improvement entitlement program entitlement transfer agreement. So Devin, I will turn that over to you and we're glad to have you today. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate your guys' flexibility. Um, Devin, I can't hear you. Which might've been the best conversation, just teasing. But um, but Devin, I now let's try it. Can you hear me now? No. Oh, oh there, there was a noise. Can you hear me now? Devin, you're good. All right, I'll turn it over to you, Devin. Okay, you can hear me now, so you're good. Cool. 
All right, Mr. Chairman, appreciate your flexibility on the schedule today. I had previous uh, commitments uh, up till 10 today, so I appreciate uh, the flexibility on the agenda. Before you today are two different items. We'll start, I believe, with the first one was the uh, grant agreement. Um, this grant agreement is a Federal Aviation Administration grant um, totaling um, 20000 um, let me make sure I get the right number for you. 20609 I believe it was. Um, and this is a uh, American Rescue Plan Act grant uh, that is to be used for concessions relief at the airport. Uh, uh, several months ago, the, the Board of County Commissioners approved a ARPA grant for the airport, and it was for our operational um, costs related to COVID. Uh, this is the second component and final component of ARPA for the airport, and this money is granted to the airport to provide relief to our concessionaires, our rental cars, our, um, our vendors, our advertisers, um, to be able to do uh, or provide them relief on their rents and the minimum revenue guarantees at the airport. So we... Um, would kindly ask for your approval on this grant so we can execute this and provide the relief that uh, Congress uh, outlined to our tenants and our concessionaires. Thank you, Devin. And um, a quick question for myself, Devin. Is there, is there, this is there's no match that we're required. This is just a grant straight out with you guys, correct? This is 100% federal, no, no local match. Okay. Fellow commissioners, any other questions? Mr. Chairman, if I can real quick, uh, yes. I forgot to mention that this is a e-signature document. So if approved by the commission, it'll go to Chairman Smith for his signature in his email. And then once he signs it, it'll go to your uh, county attorney for his signature before getting sent over to City of Rock Springs for their signatures. Um, Devin, if you'll hold one second, I do need to double check with, a, uh, chair, uh, with our county attorney, John DeLeon. That would be my signature today because I'm the acting chairman today, correct? Okay. Devin, that would be me then. I, Mr. Chairman, unfortunately, I'm unable to change it. It's a federal document locked in by the feds. I can't go in and have it changed at this point. So I'm going to let uh, just clarify with John DeLeon. Are we okay with that? That means uh, Chairman Smith isn't here. You got him. We got to look, Jeff. So I'm um, Devin. So go ahead. I mean, we're going to have to have, we're going to have to have it so that it's your signature somehow. We can't, uh, uh, Chairman. Uh, we Smith speak in the mic so Devin can hear you. Jeff. Chair Chairman Smith is not present today. So we, we can't have his signature. So whether we do that by, by regular, uh, document being emailed, um, we, have to be able to have, well, Mr. Brubaker, we, Chairman Smith is not here. No, I understand. I'm shaking. The reason I'm shaking my head is that's not possible. So we'll have to work through that. It's, I, I, I can't Mr. control and force the FAA to do something. We're locked Mr. in well, by I, their Mr. policies. And I, and Mr. I can. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Uh, Wendley. Uh, Mr. Brubaker, uh, what's, what's your uh, deadline on the grant that has to be submitted? I'm looking right now um, to see what the signature requirement is. I apologize for the confusion. No, it's not, um, this, this is not your fault. This, is, uh, yeah, this was an emergency during the night, so. Uh, February 25th, 2022. Uh, so fe February 25th is the hard deadline to sign this or we have to turn the money away. Uh, Mr. Um, hang on for a second, uh, Mr. De Leon. I mean, the, the difficulty is, of course, we we have to have the approval mm -hmm. of somebody who is present. Uh, Chairman Smith is not here, and so my suggestion would be to have uh, a motion to approve, uh, allow the uh, chairman. Uh, to sign any uh, appropriate documents um, and we can proceed from there if we need to discuss different ratification processes we can do that uh, um, for next for the next meeting in other words 
make a motion for that it be approved, that the chairman be allowed to sign any and all documents, uh, and then we can move forward and uh, we'll talk with Mr. Brubaker. I understand that he's saying that everything is impossible, uh, but we'll, we'll see if there's any mechanism to accomplish that. If not, then we can get a signature and we can accomplish any ratifications that we need to accomplish uh, next week. Does that work for all parties? Does that get this? Does that get this document signed by the twenty fifth by Jeff Smith by Commissioner Smith, or do, is that still a non? That's that still can occur, and then we can we will make a motion to authorize uh, Chairman to sign, which in this case uh, it'll be Commissioner Smith, and then at the next meeting in March we'll ratify the document yeah. with Commissioner Smith. Signature, Devin. Okay, thank you. And I apologize. The FA ties our hands, and it's not me trying to be difficult. It's One, the, and the FA has this new e-signature process that's locked in all the way back at Washington D.C. So I, I apologize that this is complicated. I I wish I could control it. And I think we can still have that phone call um, to see um, if there's any way to ex expedite it rather than just saying that you know, hands are tied, but we'll one, one road or the other can get it accomplished. Yeah, we, we've, we've got an avenue now and we can check on another one, Devin. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions for um, Mr. Brubaker from the commission? <clears throat> With that being said, uh, fellow commissioners, do uh, is there a motion to make? Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman, go ahead. Go ahead, Mary. Mr. Mary. Chairman, I would make the motion to approve uh, the grant, the assistant volunteer fire. No, whoops, wrong one. FAA grant agreement, uh, and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay. Does that work, John? Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Shanfield. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Any discussion? With no discussion, all in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes, and we'll work through the process uh, with Daly, uh, Attorney DeLeon and uh, Devin Brubaker. So, all right, Devin, what's next? So the next document, and I, I guess I'll start out with, this one is a different type of document that will allow a handwritten signature um, or a digital signature, but it can be signed by anybody at the commission um, level, so we won't have the same complications with this one. This is a transfer of airport improvement program entitlement funds to Central Wyoming Regional Airport in Riverton. Back in 2020, uh, we received a transfer from Central Wyoming Regional Airport for... Am I needing to stop? I'm seeing some hand signals. I no, apologize. You're no, we're okay. We're talking. All right. Had some guests show up, Devin. All right, sorry about that. Um, so this is a transfer of those funds back. So back in 2020, uh, Central Wyoming Regional Airport in Riverton transferred a million dollars of their entitlement money uh, to us to fulfill a project for our snow removal equipment building. And this is simply us transferring the funds back using our 2022 entitlements. This is an administrative transfer. There is actually no money changing hands. Um, this is all done at the federal level. This agreement simply states that we are okay with the federal government giving Central Wyoming Regional Airport our entitlements for 2022. Um, and once again, that's just paying back, if you will, the entitlements that they transferred to us in 2020. We do this quite frequently um, within the state. Sometimes airports don't have a project in a specific year, but the funds, if they're not used, they're lost. So it's an opportunity for us to transfer funds to other airports that have larger projects. And then we're able to pay the, basically pay back in future years with future entitlements. So um, this is done regularly with the FA um, and throughout the state. And at this point, somewhat of a formality that we're just having to say that 
we agree we're going to pay them back as we agreed to two years ago. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Brubaker? Seeing there are no um, other questions, um, do we have a, can I get a motion regarding this present, um, um, this grant? Mr. Chairman, I would be yes. happy to make that motion. And that would be- And authorize chairman to sign, acting chairman or whatever. Okay. We have a second. Second. Seconded by uh, Commissioner Shanfeld. Any discussion? All in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes, and we will get that stuff signed for you, Devin, and we'll work through these processes. Mr. Chairman, as airport liaison, I would like to ask Mr. Brubaker if he has anything to comment on our meeting today at one, which I'm not going to be able to make. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I honestly don't have anything to share um, outside of my update. I provided a couple weeks to you all. I will be back, I'm sure, around April to do another airport update, um, but nothing, uh, nothing to of specific note to, to share today. Um, and Mr. Chairman, I'll reach out to, uh, to John DeLeon, Mr. DeLeon uh, regarding that grant so we can get that addressed. I appreciate your schedule flexibility and your understanding on the uh, complications with that uh, e-signature. All right, once again, we'll uh, mark in the calendar that you do appreciate us and our flexibility. And uh, we are glad we were able to get you in today, Devin. And I will be taking you up on a tour and an update here soon. So um, up there as you've offered. So oh, thank you very much, Devin. Keep up the great work and appreciate all you're doing at the airport during this time. So, All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank, thank you, you, Devin. You be too. safe. Thanks. All right. Up next, I, we're, we're ahead of schedule, but we're going to keep rolling if that's okay with everyone. Um, we have um, the Conservation District 2021 Annual Report, and we'll have them come up front. And before, as they're coming up front, I want to, uh, as they, you guys can come up, I just want to comment that um, it's actually been kind of a joy to be the liaison of uh, the Conservation District over the last year. Um, as a commissioner, I can tell you my weakest area was probably public lands when I came into office. And um, this has been a great group to be part of for myself to expand my knowledge and have a better understanding of public lands and conservation. And I really appreciate um, Tom and Dwight and Karen and the board for all the work that they've done and, um, and being patient and, and kind of uh, mentoring and teaching me a little bit. So I'm really excited to hear the annual report today. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Make sure you introduce yourself as you talk into the mic, who you're with and anyone with you. So. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Tom Burris. I'm the chairman of the Sweetwater County Conservation District. And um, uh, we used to try to come in before, before COVID. We used to try to come in once a quarter and give you guys a, a little briefing about where we're, what, what, what all's going on with the district. Uh, kind of haven't done that for a while. And uh, uh, since we had a change on our board and you had a change in your board, we don't have our, our spokesman that we had for several years was Mary Tillman. Uh, so this is my first briefing to you guys. So we will uh, uh, see what we can get done. Uh, I brought uh, uh, Karen Pacini and Dwight Bliss with me today. Uh, Karen is our office manager. Uh, Dwight is, uh, is the um, uh, urban representative on the board and he handles all of our Not technical large. stuff and and uh, um, keep, drives to keep us operational with, with the electronics and the uh, uh, help on the web pages and, and just everything uh, we do technically. He's, uh, he's an instrument, a, a big instrument for getting that done. Uh, we start off our, uh, uh, our presentation today with just a, with a, with a PowerPoint. We have that up. Okay, okay. Uh, that is um, just the state statute that gives us guidance and uh, direction of, what, of, of the things we are supposed to be doing. Uh, my comments may not fit with the slides all the way through here, uh, but we'll, um, we, you know, it might bounce around a little bit. Almost everybody is familiar with when they think conservation district, they, they pretty much 
consider the part, the, the first paragraph in this where it's soil and, and different things like that and uh, water, the things that are generally thought about. The second portion of this, where it gets down into the natural resources and the uh, uh, doing the things to help control or, or stabilize the uh, uh, the tax the tax base control floods and prevent impairment of dams, wildlife, public lands, all the, uh, and the 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 catch all here that really gets us uh, pretty varied is the safety and general welfare of the people of the state. Uh, that's quite a charge for a voluntary board to try to. There's a lot of things fit into that. Uh, in, in my opinion, Sweetwater County has something that a lot of people wish they had more of, and that's space. That's open space where we can get out and we can enjoy the things that we, um, that the county has to offer. Most, a lot of wildlife, a lot of uh, recreational activities. Uh, those things are regulated a lot by the BLM, the Forest Service, uh, National Recreation Area and stuff down here that uh, different, different government agencies regulate how those lands are managed. Uh, we, as, a, as an elected board, have a responsibility to participate in, that, in the planning on those things. Uh, it's a little frustrating this, this year for us because we we finished up a lot of the plans for with the BLM and the Forest Service in the past four years where the updates on them. Well, this year we get to do it all over again because all those plans are being revised uh, and the revisions, it, 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 they all have to be addressed again. Like we just about everything we did in the last four years on the land planning has got to all be done again with this administration. It's a little frustrating and it's uh, um, time consuming, it takes a lot of our time, but we will, um, in order to do that, in order to do a lot of this planning, we had to have, in order to be invited to be a uh, um, cooperating agency with the federal programs, we had to have a federal or a, a land land a, a plan of how we were going to do things. So we in a few years ago, I was actually about 15 years ago, Mary was in, involved in it and the whole board's been involved in it. We developed a land and resource use plan and policy. And that um, gives us a, a, a starting point to where we can request the BLM and the Forest Service to do things more or less like we would in the county would like them to be done instead of just coming in with their Washington DC plan for how to run, how to operate in Sweetwater County. We have an input, we have input to that planning process. Um, it gets a little confusing sometimes on how we're gonna manage, how we're gonna do, work with all these different agencies. We've got uh, about four different uh, um, BLM er uh, areas that we work with, the Rock Springs and, and Rollins and Kimmerer and, and the different BLM organizations overlap, <laughs> overlap Sweetwater County or parts of different parts of it. So it's, uh, there's a lot of planning that we have to participate in, a lot of meetings they have to go to, to, uh, to make sure that we have, um, make sure that Sweetwater County is represented in those plans. Uh, in my opinion, it's, uh, you know, if we have, like I said earlier, we have what most people that come to work in Sweetwater County want to use the public lands and the outdoors. If their access to those points are limited by road closures, et cetera, et cetera, which is a, uh, a lot of times there's an effort uh, a federal effort to shut down access to these things. And we have 
We have done a lot of planning over the years and developed a big database. Um, the, the county has the county has funded a lot of the, a lot of our operation, almost all of our operation, because we, we do not have a mill levy. So most of our funding comes from the county. We use that money to um, as as uh, matching funds for other grants, and and are able to uh, get uh, much larger amount of dollars to work with to do these plans. So, um, In order to be able to comply or to cooperate, we had to have the plan. We did, did develop as it was back in, 0, in the mid 05, 06, along and through there is when we started that. And it's required to be updated again every, every five years, you have to update that plan. And we just did a, a 2020 uh, update on it. So it, it is current. And I heard, I have heard that you, the county has to come up with a, with some land, with a land plan uh, in the near term here. And that plan, we did offer the plan that the, when we came up with ours, we did offer it to the county uh, back when initially, back in 06 or 07, somewhere right along in there. I, can see. I was on the board at that time too, but I don't remember for sure exactly which year it was. But that plan is available. It's on our website. You can, uh, uh, use any or all of it that you need to incorporate into the plan that you guys have to come up with. Um, you can, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a public document. Uh, like I say, it was updated in 2020 or in 2020 and uh, is, uh, um, is available to in, in any way that you may need to use it. Um, one of the major tasks that we do in trying to uh, to uh, make our county more accessible, uh, DEQ has a list has has um, classifications for streams and and water bodies and things, and they have some different. Um, different terminology that some people, are, I wasn't familiar with originally, but primary contact water is basically any, any that's water that you can get into and not have to worry about dying. Uh, the, uh, um, one of their criteria is that any water flowing through a municipality should be primary contact water because kids could get into it. Well, Bitter Creek doesn't really fit with, with primary contact water, but it, so there, you know, there's a lot of uh, work going on with, uh, with the city, with DEQ, Wyoming DEQ and the, uh, and the federal program also, um, where we have done a lot of studies on Bitter Creek um we we got a we back in the mid 0506 maybe a little seven uh we established the bitter creek kilpecker creek water watershed assessment group it's made up of industry conservation district city folks uh county folks any anybody that wanted to be involved in in um uh, maintaining or improving Bitter Creek or Kilpecker Creek. We, we had a uh, major project where we put in a drop structure because the, the old one was deteriorated and was going to collapse. And in this, in this soil, if you don't have a structure to drop the elevation of the water, then you're just going to have a, a tremendous amount of, of erosion in this sand, sandy soil out here. I was just out there this morning and our maintenance of, maintenance of the drop structure, we, um, we've had some erosion, water coming down through that sandy soil, trying to eat its way around and under the, the structure. We have a, um, 
a had an engineer and another one of our uh, supervisors out there with me this morning earlier in in uh, um, making some plans. Uh, the engineer will come up. We'll we'll have plans for. He, we're gonna, he's going to try to have it done in the next couple of weeks before our next meeting. Um, that's an ongoing process. Uh, we we did allow for maintenance of that structure in our budgeting, and uh, uh, we have. Uh, it'll be a fairly a fairly pricey repair or addition. I guess you could call it a repair, but it's 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 doing more than what the original structure had in it uh, to try to stabilize that soil. Um, it is very difficult when to stabilize the bottom of this basin because it's all, it's, the bedrock is a long ways down in a lot of, in a lot of it. And um, um, we are working on uh, continued maintenance of that. We're working on the um, uh, vegetation and stuff to try to try to get the, the uh, soil structure or soil maintained. Um, okay, that took care of the drop structure portion. Okay. Oh, we... Did you talk about the letter? The participation request. Did you oh no, I did not. Yeah. Just that they received it. You come on over and oh. make a comment on that. Okay, I yeah. Uh, in January, we sent out a request letter. This is a project that we're working on. Um, with our, we updated our Bitter Creek watershed based plan. It was finalized in January of 2021. So we have management measures within the plan that we need to meet or that we would like to, to try to improve the water quality in Bitter and Kilpecker Creek. So we're just asking for county participation from different county departments, possibly the county engineer to help us or the GIS planning division here that could help us um, get some information on um, septics or chloride impairments or E. coli bacteria. There's pet waste receptacles there's like 13 or 19 management measures within the plan that we'd like to try to work on. So we're looking for participation from the county, city, landowners to help us um, go through that. This is through 2027. So we've got <coughs> five more years. So just to let you know what that letter was that we submitted. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're going to go up to one of the things, uh, a lot of our water, our drainages uh, do not, well, not a lot of them, a couple of them do not originate in Sweetwater County. Like Bitter Creek is, on, is all in Sweetwater County. Um, there are several other small drainages uh, down on the uh, west side of the gorge. All, they're completely in Sweetwater County. Um, on the Big Sandy and the Little Sandy and Pacific Creek all originate in other other counties. Uh, the, all, all three of those have had or currently have some sort of a listing on them. Uh, built better, uh, Big Sandy was just recently listed for E. coli, but it's it's nor it's up in 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 Sublette County where the E. coli is originally, you know, it's uh, the creek, Big Sandy is listed below the confluence of Squaw Creek. Now, Squaw Creek is up above the fish trap thing they built uh, a couple years ago on the Big Sandy. Um, I was visiting with the uh, Sublet County Conservation District and uh, they, they have had some changes also in the people that are doing the water quality monitoring on that stretch of the river. And, um, but they are, uh, we will be working with them and we'll be working with the DEQ, the Wyoming DEQ on, on what has to be done up, or what can be done up in that area. Most of that will be with Sublette County because it, the, uh, the other creek 
is in, is in sublet. Um, we have um, Big, Big Sandy, or no, Bitter Creek. has been listed with the E. coli and, um, and chloride shell. Uh, back up on, on the northern end, the little, little Sandy is also listed for sedimentation. If you can imagine sedimentation in a Sandy River. Uh, anyway, I don't know what they're going to do. What we're going to, you know, there's, there's an effort to try to get the standards changed you know, like one size fits all with masks, one size fits all with rivers, right? Because all of our soil in the U.S. is all the same. So anyway, it's some of our some of our water is in Big Sandy and in Kilpecker, and uh, they, there, there's going to be sedimentation in those in the water in those channels. So we have to work with. The environmental people to try to get a baseline on what um, what the water can be. And we want to make it as good as it can be, but we can't make it distilled water. It, it's... So uh, we have been uh, uh, okay. That's that takes care of most of our water quality. We have been. Uh, uh, oh, I wanted to come back. We have, we, I said before we started a, uh, what we call the BK WAG, it's the Bitter Creek, Kilpecker Creek Watershed Assessment Group. We have uh, a meeting usually every April. And uh, for all of the folks that have been participating in that or anybody interested in the creeks like what uh, Karen was just talking about, uh, we would encourage as many of you as can to participate or to come and listen to, to that uh, BK WAG meeting. Uh, we haven't set the date yet, but it'll probably be about the second week in April. That's usually when, it, usually when we have that. And it's normally over at the White Mountain Library in Rock Springs. Um, we have worked with other organizations to do water quality um, improvement. We've worked with Todd Unlimited to do some uh, projects on the eastern or western side of the county. Um, we've worked with um, other conservation districts, both Sublette County and um, Little Snake River conservation district on projects on the western or on the eastern side little snake river borders us on the eastern side border sweetwater county on the east eastern side of sweetwater county they've been doing a a lot of um a lot of work for us because we don't have the staff they have a mill levy over there and they have staff they have an engineer on staff they can they can do a lot more than karen can do for us we can't get her to do engineering projects too well. Um, we um, want to back up a little bit. When, when uh, we used to be called the Big Sandy Conservation District, and we, this was years originally, and a lot of the conservation districts or almost all the conservation districts were set up on watershed basis and boundaries. Um, but when ours was set up for, for the only agricultural area we had at the time was the Big Sandy area or the Farson area. So they, they called it the Big Sandy. Well, we found out that we were charged with doing, providing these services for the whole county. Well, back about 15 or 16 years ago, maybe 15, anyway, we moved, we decided that we couldn't function as a big Sandy and do everything we needed to do for Sweetwater County. So we moved our office to Rock Springs and 
started trying to operate as a Sweetwater County Conservation District instead of a Big Sandy Conservation District. Um, we didn't get any allocation or any additional people to do any of that with, to help with that, uh, with that expanded area. We made an agreement with, uh, entered into an MOU kind of with uh, Little Snake River because they had an operational group with their engineer over there. And uh, they were able to do a lot of projects on the Eastern end of the county. And that uh, they used our, we gave them about $20,000 because we did not have any way to service the ranches and uh, operations out there. We gave them about $20,000 a year, which they normally leverage with grants and other funds. I don't know where they get them all, but uh, into over two thousand, over two hundred thousand dollars worth of projects being able to be done with the twenty thousand dollars that we, we, that we pay them, uh, they have they have done a really good job of helping us serve the the um, constituents out on the eastern part of the state. Um, Okay, I, I think I could turn, uh, we've got a, um, we're gonna turn the time over to Karen here for a little while to talk about some uh, community enhancement grants that we've got that, uh, Karen, do you wanna talk on, about them? Where are we at on time? Are we pretty close? We've got about five to 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Just real quickly, we are offering again this year a community enhancement grant. We realize there are a lot of projects out there, schools, clubs, organizations, who we believe would benefit the public and promote, promote the resource stewardship. Projects must be completed within the boundaries of Sweetwater County. Applications can be written up to $5,000. Uh, the date for applications are due April 4th, it's a Monday. We've done a few grant applications in the past. Last year, we worked with the VOAG program in Parson with a tree program. Two years ago, we had a grant from the city of Rock Springs along with the uh, tourism board. They did a joint grant uh, that supplied trees on one of the exits off of I-80 in Rock Springs. And we supplied funds for the new, um, she was just in this morning. Yeah, tourism. yeah, travel and tourism board. We they purchased some brochures, so we think that's an important program, and it really does help uh, the community. And next, thanks to our liaison, Commissioner Roy Lloyd, and the rest of the county uh, board of county commissioners. Thank you for all your help and support over the years. We really appreciate it. We're at questions and discussions. If you have anything, so. Thank you guys. Let me ask my fellow commissioners if you have any questions for Karen or Tom. Good job, thank you. Okay, thank you guys very much for coming to present and we appreciate all that you do and all the support you provide and even Dwight back there. And he's kind of the quiet guy of the group but he actually plays a big role in what we do. So thank you to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. You're all welcome to come to, invited to come to our to our meetings are normally the first Thursday, four o'clock, and we are now relocated over to Green River. We're not in Rock Springs anymore. Yep, a golden hours building. Golden hours senior center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Be safe, please. All right, we're going to move forward. Next is the part of the meeting where um, we're going to be inundated by Gary McLean for a little while. So. Um, I apologize to the viewers, but no, um, we're going to bring up uh, Mr. McLean, and uh, we're on tab um, tab L, which is the request approval of of uh, the stop loss renewal uh, grant agreement. Uh, that's Pareto, Commissioner Lloyd. Yeah, <laughs> um, I just like stop loss. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, County Commissioners. Uh, this is the, as you know, <clears throat> um, when we did the enrollment. Uh, commitment back in October for the health insurance program. Um, it takes a while for these contracts to ultimately uh, be developed and, and come back before the board. 
Uh, <clears throat> so uh, what what's before you is actually the stop loss contract um, <clears throat> uh, reflecting the, the current status. Um, you'll notice in the version that's been sent out, there's a couple uh, names in there that are redacted. Those are um, uh, personal health information names. Um, so those have been redacted. I will supply the original uh, agreement to be signed if the board chooses to uh, uh, sign the agreement. <clears throat> As you recall, um, yeah, we had a couple tough years and uh, some large stop loss claims, uh, which uh, forced us to look at some alternatives. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one of those uh, is with Pareto, uh, which is um, basically similar to the Warm and LGLP. Uh, insurance for stop loss. It's it's essentially uh, pooled resources uh, amongst other public entities for stop loss protection. One of the significant things that this afforded us was um, other than the existing uh, lasered claims, uh, those are claims that where there's a known risk. Um, so they, they laser those um, at a certain level. Um, and but once those go off, uh, there'll be no more lasered claims, and there's <clears throat> fixed um, agreements in terms of the amount of growth uh, that can occur in terms of the stop loss rates. And um, this was a good uh, strategy for us to control some of the costs associated um, with with stop loss. <clears throat> for those of you that aren't familiar, stop loss insurance. Um, we self-insure up to $200,000. We pay all the claims out of our insurance fund up to $200,000. Any claims that go over that $200,000 threshold um, ultimately are paid by the stop loss uh, insurance provider. Um, and as you know, um, with some of the uh, large claims we've had in the last year, there's been um, a larger <clears throat> number of claims that have penetrated stop loss as well as uh, a larger dollar amount uh, of claims that have penetrated stop loss. And um, so um, essentially um, what we're requesting is uh, approval from the Board of County Commissioners and authorization for the chairman to initial and sign uh, where appropriate. And I'd be happy to entertain any questions from the board at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. McLean. Any questions for my fellow commissioners? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. All right, go ahead, Ms. Tillman. Does this cover a stop loss for any and all employees who might exceed the 200000 Yes, it's for everybody under our plan. So um, keep in mind that the plan is, is roughly 500 people, 1,000 covered lives. Those aren't just county employees. Those are employees of all the component units also. So this plan um, uh, applies, and the stop loss coverage applies to all of those people also. Any other questions? All right, seeing no other questions, um, what do we wanna do with the 2022 Pareto HCC stop loss agreement um, and allowing the chairman to initial and sign as needed? Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve this uh, Pareto. Stop loss renewal agreement. And, and allow have, the chairman to sign it. And initial. have allow the chairman to sign. Yes, thank you. Great. Do we have a thank you, Commissioner Toman? Um, do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Shanfield. Any discussion? With that be with no discussion, we'll move on to a vote. All in favor with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. All right, we'll move on to tab number M, which is a request approval to restaff positions in accounting. And that will be by uh, continued by uh, Mr. McLean and also Clerk Lane. I'll turn it over to you guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you, uh, County Commissioners, before you is a request uh, to restaff um, uh, some positions in the County Clerk's Office, as you know. Um, as a result of the recent um, uh, voluntary separation plan, um, there will be some folks 
um, who have accepted those plans that'll be leaving. Um, and one of those is in the accounting uh, clerk supervisor position. Um, in talking with Ms. Lane, um, it seems um, appropriate <clears throat> even uh, to get the approval to restaff the position uh, so that the process can um, get underway uh, to, to get those positions filled. Uh, I think the intent is to replace the supervisor position from within. Um, and then the secondary request is asking to refill that vacancy uh, resulting uh, from that internal staffing. And then the cost summary, um, you know, an estimated cost summary is attached uh, for your reference. Anything to add, Clerk Wayne? Yes. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, I would like to um, let you know that while this position will not be um, vacated till May, um, so I won't be advertising just yet, but I need to um, be ready to go with that and advertise. I will need someone who has some experience in this area that I will need to begin recruiting, but I do not expect to hire um, this position until closer to the end of April, beginning of May to give a few weeks to um, learn under the current person. So just so you know, that's why I'm starting now. So I'm ready to go when it's time to get advertising out to give me a little more time to find someone who is qualified for this type of position. Any questions for Mr. McLean or Mrs. Lane? I see Ms. Shanefield uh, raising her hand. Go ahead, Commissioner Shanefield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know who wants to answer, but um, I know that in your department, the supervisors are typically two grades ahead. Right? Yes. This one is only one. Oh, no, it should be two. Is there a reason for that? So it should be grade 20? Yeah, they're usually two. Um, I, yeah. I believe when the current one was put into place, it was a different okay. thing, but I do think that needs to be corrected a little. And while I'm here, I know um, the person that I am going to be promoting to the lead position, which all of my leads in my office are working leads. Nobody is just a supervisor, so they, they do participate and work on a daily basis, but um, she does not participate in the insurance program the one that is I'm moving up. So there is a little teeny, teeny, a little bit more savings there, but I am pointing out my savings. So um, we'll take what we can get. So yes, that might be a little different there. So I, I don't know, how do we wanna move forward with that? If it's not the right pay grade on here and the um, health insurance isn't correct either. Is that, or do we just leave the health insurance the way it is and then it does, I mean, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter. But. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think the with respect to the health insurance issue, um, you know, we generally put the the MAC, the worst case scenario. Right. Um, so I, I think that what Ms. Lane's pointing out is that it shouldn't be that. And we often have that case. And, and the second issue um, is that I, you know, be happy to, to discuss the history of that. But I don't think that um, I don't think there's um, any. Um, anything incorrect about the pay rate um, or about the evaluation of the position, but we'd be happy to take a look at it. So if we want to take a look at that between now and the time that the position is filled, that would, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. I would suggest looking at it. I don't even know, like I said, I don't know if I'm comfortable proving it at a grade 19, if it should be at a 20. Um, and if all the other ones are two grades ahead, then that's probably something that needs to be looked at. So that's my opinion. <laughs> Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Wendling. Um, Mr. McLean, Clerk Lane, is this request basically to start advertising, isn't it? It's a restock. Yeah, it's a restock, it, but, but we will be advertising soon. Advertising to restaff. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to what Commissioner Shanefield's talking about, could we not? Um, approve advertising to restaff and then at the next meeting come in with a uh, up to date. Or we can wait till just next time and bring it all at works once for you. because I have time to do with that. That way it just starts out correctly. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we postpone this uh, restaffing of the accounting clerk supervisor position, just that one only, not the other one. 
Okay. So which one are we postponing just to be specific? To the next meeting we're postponing. No, but I mean, which which one of the two positions? The accounting clerk supervisor. Okay. I'll second that. Any discussion? So the motion is to um, postpone the um, the the vote on the accounting clerk supervisor. All in favor? A point of order. Point of order. Yes. Let me ask uh, our assistant county attorney. Do we have to say a date for postponing? What do I not, need to? Do not have to say a date. Uh, doesn't doesn't postpone the vote per se. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just a postponement. Can be brought up. At the next meeting, if there were Thank you. unusual circumstances, could be the meeting after, doesn't need to be brought back to the table. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My apologies for interrupting. No problem. So we'll go back to that. All in favor, um, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, that position will be um, discussed at a later date. Um, so then let's take a look at the second position, um, just the accounting clerk one entry level position then. Um, do I have a motion for that? Mr. Chairman? Yes. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve um, this restaffing um, request as presented. And allow the chairman and to sign. And authorize chairman to sign. That's Ms. Schoenfeld with a motion and a second. Mr. Would, Chairman, I'll second the okay. motion. Of okay, the that would be seconded by um, Mr. Wendling. All, um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, that position does pass, so. Okay, thank you. And so I will we'll be looking forward to hearing about that, the, the questions there and clarifying that for the next meeting. Okay, and thank you. And I'll also be bringing one with that restructuring that I had talked with you about and talked to Mr. McClure okay. about. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, that brings us to the uh, request of approval in the titles department. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. That would be is yes, the assessor's office. Uh, there's a few of these. So we'll have uh, Mr. McLean and Mr. Davis uh, present the next few items. So. Well done. We, um, so the title position um, is another position within the county clerk's office. And um, so um, similar with the previous one, there'll be a, a, a vacancy as a result of the voluntary separation program and um, um, essentially restaffing that position uh, and then um, filling the entry level position that's here. And we have kind of the cost summary um, that um, is in your packet. So th it was, it's actually kind of confusing when you look at the actual thing that does say um, it does say titles department, Mr. McLean and Mr. Devis, um, but it's actually, um, the, yeah, no, this is actually correct. So the oh, title, okay. my fault. Yeah, and I, I think you just, yeah, I'm sorry, looking ahead Mr. of time. Chairman, so yeah, I you moved ahead of so, time and I was like, okay. All right, so auto clerk. <laughs> so you already so voted on This is for it. the auto clerk position. So any comments, um, Mrs. Lane? Um, no, <laughs> sorry. Okay. No, it's just, it's, you know, we had a retirement and I am moving someone up from within the department who has experience. And then I'll just need to backfill that so that we have a somewhat full staff. <laughs> okay. Any questions for Mr. McLean or Mrs. Lane? All right, with none being said, I'll look for a motion requesting uh, to restaff the auto title clerk supervisor position. Um, and, um, and then also um, allowing the chairman to sign. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mrs. Shavell. I will um, make a motion to approve the request to restaff both um, auto title positions in the clerk's department as presented and authorize the chairman to sign. Thank you, Ms. Shanfield, for the motion. Do I have a second? I can second that. Mrs. Toman, Chairman, Commissioner Toman does second that. Um, any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wenling. Yeah, would uh, Commissioner Shanefield clarify her uh, motion because she said both and and would you clarify? Do you mean both the title clerk and the title clerk supervisor? Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for clarification. Thank you. I did hear that. So, all right. 
All in, thank you for the clarification, Mr. Um, Chair, Mr. Wendling. All in favor, vote with an aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, thank you, Ms. Lane. Up next now, we actually get to hear from the dynamic duo of Dave Devis <laughs> and Gary McLean. Just maybe, we'll see. All right, um, thank you for bearing with me. All right, so we'll move on, that's tab. We're now on tab, just making sure I'm right, tab in. Request approval to restaff. Um, oh. Tab O, thank you, sorry. Thank you, I've lost my mind at this point. Request uh, approval to staff seasonal field assistant in, um, in the county assessor's office. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, county commissioners, we'll, we'll try to plow through this one. Um, uh, before you is a request and a cost summary to request a, a four month uh, seasonal uh, position uh, in the county assessor's office as a field assistant at uh, 32 hours per week and the cost summary uh, is attached. And um, this was a, uh, a position that was uh, um, available also. And Dave can share with you any uh, thoughts that he may have or questions that the board may have. Fellow commissioners, any questions for Mr. McLean or Mr. Divas? Mr. Divas, any comments you'd like to make? No, this is just kind of the chain reaction to the early separation program. We're, we'll get to it, but we're moving someone from a position into that chief appraiser position. We're eliminating the office manager position. Our part-time seasonal from the year before, we're actually going to try and make full-time this year and then fill the part-time seasonal with this particular position that we're on now. So it's just kind of the chain reaction of moving everybody <laughs> up and getting a new one in. Sorry, and <laughs> yeah, and to be clear, we, we did have very, very good luck with our part-time seasonal last year. I hate to give you credit, but it did work. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I hate to give you credit. No celebration or gloating, but right. just... But we were, hope, we're hoping to get as lucky this time as we did last time. So we, and the person that we did have as part-time seasonal, we're hoping that they will accept a full-time position. So it's just kind of the chain reaction from the retirement. Any other questions from my fellow commissioners? Well, my only comment is if we keep having these open winters, I don't see why you're gonna need a seasonal. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a mild winter. Then so. we'll get the big blizzard tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so we'll bring the question, the uh, request of re approval of a full-time, restaff full-time field assistant in the county assessor's office and allow the chairman to sign all needed documents. Do I have a motion? <clears throat> so moved. Moved by Commissioner Shanfield. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wendling. Any discussion? All in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, we'll move on to tab P. Um, so as Dave put as part of the chain reaction, I guess this would be <laughs> one more link in the chain. Um, before you is the request uh, to um, uh, eliminate the office manager position um, and replace uh, with the field assistant uh, position. Um, and this sort of dovetails with moving um, that um, uh, person uh, up to the chief appraiser position to fill the vacancy as a result of the early separation. <clears throat> and as you will see in there, there's a anticipated $28,490 decrease uh, in, in the cost uh, difference between those two. Mr. Chairman, are we on tab P or Q? We're on tab P. Okay. It's tab P. Okay. Yeah. It's good to clarify. We're minding our P's and Q's at this point, folks. So, all right. Back to task, tab P. So, any questions for Mr. McLean or Mr. Demas? If hearing no questions, we can look at a motion to request approval to restaff full time assistant position in county office, assessor's office and allow the chairman to sign all documents. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Let's move by Chairman Mrs. Toman. And do I have a second? Second. Second by Chair by Commissioner Shanfeld. Um, any discussion? All in favor, um, please show, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now to Q. 
And once again, Mr. McLean and Mr. Davis. Mr. Chairman, I can hear that radio announcer and you coming out there. Um, I almost said Abbott and Costello, but we went with Mr. McLean and Davis. So, so um, the final um, step in this, I guess, in kind of reverse order is uh, restaffing the vacancy, um, which resulted from the early separation uh, for the chief appraiser <clears throat> and um, um, by you know promoting from within and um, filling that vacancy. The cost summary um, is there and any of the changes are due to differences in health insurance. Any questions for um, Mr. Davis or Mr. McLean as we've gone through a chain reaction of positions, so. Hearing no questions, I'll, I'll, I'll request a motion to restaff the chief appraiser position in the county assessor's office and allow the chairman to um, sign all needed documents. So moved. moved by Commissioner Shanfield. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, was second. that you, Mr. Wendling? Okay. We have a do we have any discussion? All in favor, please vote with an aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion passes. Are you trying to stay and get brownie points for staying on schedule? You know what? <laughs> um, no, but we got lucky. So, um, so with that being said, that does take us to a break. We are at about that break time. So let's take a break till 1140. We'll reconvene and hear from Commissioner Toman as she speaks about federal land and natural gas resource updates. So we'll take a break until 1140.
I'm going to bring us back to session. We are currently going to be um, what looks to be tab R, which is federal land and natural gas resource update. And our presenter will be Commissioner Tobin. So I will turn it over to Commissioner Tobin at this point. Well, thank you, Commissioner Chairman Lloyd. It is natural resources update, not, not gas, but yeah, that's fine. As a federal cooperator in all of these plans that we are involved in uh, with the federal agencies, at some points they're pre-decisional and cannot be shared with the public until a public draft is issued. But other times there are comments that are prepared for us on our behalf through that coalition of local governments and the other uh, county partners that we have. And the timing on some of the contents, uh, comments don't uh, fall in line with our meeting. So we have to, we ratify them. So I wanna make sure all of those comments are ratified so they're on the official record if they're at a public point. So we have uh, one is a, ratifying comments that were submitted on our behalf regarding waters of the US. So that's attachment one. I would just ask for a motion to ratify those comments that were submitted on our behalf. And when they are on a short timeline, I do send them to the commissioners in case there are any concerns that we can address them before they're submitted. So I would ask for a motion to ratify. Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wendling. I'll make a motion to ratify the CLG comments on the waters of the U.S. Is that correct, Commissioner Tillman, yes. on our behalf? Yes. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Wendling. Do I have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please vote with a yes vote. Aye. Aye. It's kind of throwing you off. Okay. All opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion passes. Okay, the second letter uh, submitted through the Coalition of Local Governments on our behalf was in regard to the Sage Grouse, the Bureau of, uh, Department of Interior and the Bureau of Land Management is reopening all of the Sage Grouse planning processes that have gone on since 2014, 2015, 2019. Now they wanna start all over with an environmental impact statement. So we are, objecting to that we have a state plan one of the best in the nation and why are they going to make us redo this whole process it costs millions of dollars of federal contractors so that's what the second set of comments are now there will be two public scoping comments on the sage grouse eis at the end of this month where the public can weigh in and say what they think about sage grouse or it's actually sage brush habitat uh, eis because the game and fish manages the bird the federal agency manages the habitat. Anyway, I would ask for a motion to accept those comments or ratify. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Wendling. Um, question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Commissioner Tolman, do, we, do, you, do you know the exact dates for those uh, public hearings? No, I have not been notified of those dates. Have you, Mr. Bingham? Uh, we haven't received dates. There are going to be two public Zoom meetings uh, for people to weigh in and, and give comments on, on that proposed EIS. Do you, do, you believe it, do you believe it'll be by the end of February or the end of March? They told us at our last meeting uh, that it would be by the end of February. All right, thank you. We'll watch for it. Any other questions for Ms. Toman? Uh, I have one, uh, Mary. Uh, the, my question uh, would be, um, I know we've seen a copy of these letters and these comments. Um, is there a way to make sure these are available on our website so it's transparent to our, or a way that it's out there so people know what we're ratifying and talking about? So yes. Sally's yes? Okay. Yes, thank Sally you. has those. Yes. Okay, thank you, Sally. As long as they're public. I figured, yeah. but I just thought I would double check. Yes. Yeah, and, and I so, think, Commissioner Lloyd? Yes. Commissioner Wenling. Once, once, when um, Ms. Schumacher, Shoemaker puts out our packets and notifies us that they're ready, the uh, packets are posted on the uh, website for the public to view. If uh, just a point of information, the only thing that won't be in the packet is anything that might be tied to executive <laughs> session or that's confidential uh, due to pre-decisional. Okay. Is that correct, Sally? Thank yes, you. and these were submitted to uh, Ms. Shoemaker uh, yep. when she was I putting the packet together. I caught her at the last hour. I promised I'll never do that again, <laughs> but then I do it every time. 
No, these were important to get out and the sooner the better, but thank you. Absolutely. So, Ms. I so would make the motion to ratify the sage grouse uh, comments or sagebrush habitat comments. So we have a motion by Ms. Toman. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wendling. Um, any discussion? The only discussion that I would say after those public comments uh, and that public scoping closes, then as cooperators, as local governments, we go back into pre-decisional meetings with the agency to vet out our local interests with them. So those uh, pre-decisional meetings are not public until they come out with a draft for the public to comment on. So I just want to let everyone know that um, there will be some pre-decisional comments once the comments are gathered and then they go back to the BLM agency. And then um, just a point of interest, the local BLM agency was not informed or included in this decision. It's totally at a federal level in DC. Uh, the local agencies are not real happy about it either because it's a lot of work for them and they say they're going to start from scratch and not even use the information that was developed over those since 2015, which is very disturbing if you ask me. Thank you for the comments. Um, we'll move forward. Any other comments to be made by the other commissioners? If not, we'll move forward with the motion on at hand. All in favor with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, go ahead and continue on. Ms. Okay, uh, the Pacific Atlantic EIS for the Trona, the two Trona plants, uh, <clears throat> they have accepted the scoping comments, which we participated in, and then now it will go pre-decisional again until they come out with a final draft, which is going to be approximately 20 months from now before that final decision is made to go ahead with those two Trona mines. So uh, the scoping time is public, but then it goes into pre-decisional again, trying to get the local interactions and technical expertise of the local governmental agencies, working with the uh, BLM or the federal agencies in developing a plan. So it will become uh, pre-decisional. I don't have any comments. I just want to mention that we had been involved in, in the public scoping process. Any questions for Ms. Toman on that? Any action needed that for Mary? No, no action on that. I'm not sure if we do the next one now or later. Federal Land and Natural Resource Use Plan Update. I can yeah, we said now. we would put so it under can... this area because it naturally fits. So you want to do it now or under? Right, John. Should we do it now? That's my thought. Okay. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, we asked for approval to submit a request to the governor's office for the Federal Land and Natural Resource Use plan and policy. They have a special account of funding for county governments to update or develop their natural resource plan and policy. Uh, technically, Sweetwater County as a commission did not does not have a natural resource plan that addresses all of the issues that are outlined in these uh, federal cooperator meetings. So um, at this time, I would just like to uh, say that we have received the funding. Uh, we just got the letter late yesterday that the governor's office has approved our request to obligate $26,250 of federal natural resource policy account funds to develop this policy on, on natural resources. Uh, there's a $7,000 match, which can be uh, in kind. And so, with the help of our grant expert, Christina Marshall. We will work through that process. And uh, I don't know if we need a motion because we've already said we're gonna submit it. Do we need a motion to accept this grant funding? Maybe it wouldn't hurt. I think a motion would be a good thing. Okay. To accept the NERPA funding as outlined this letter and Sally, I give you the letter so you get the exact whatever. Sweetwater County Natural Resource Plan for NERPA funds request. I'd entertain a motion to accept that grant funding. At this time, uh, commissioners, do um, we have any questions or is someone want, ready to make a motion for that? Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, com uh, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the uh, grant funding um, for NERPA funding for the uh, natural resource uh, plan, management plan and also approve uh, 
as part of that, the $7,000 in match funds. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, that's seconded. Any discussion? <clears throat> with no further discussion, all in favor, vote with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay, Mr. Chairman, under that same topic, I would like to be able to engage uh, Fairfield and Woods, Connie Brooks, uh, to help assist us in developing that policy. Uh, we're on a fast track to try to get this approved and uh, these funds are only good until June 30th. So we are gonna have to have public comments, public hearing. I'd like to run it through the Planning and Zoning Commission as one of our ground truthing <laughs> groups. And uh, so at this time, I would like to entertain a motion to engage Fairfield and Woods uh, and Connie Brooks as council in assisting us in developing this plan and policy. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Wedley. Go, going back to a previous meeting, help me out. Didn't we make a motion to do that once already to engage? Uh, no, Commissioner Wendling, just a point of clarification. I only ask for approval to have them assist us in developing the request. Okay, thank you. And now it's official that we can use it for through the FINERPA grant. Uh, any work that they do would go through the FINERPA grant. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And we should have a letter of engagement to sign today. By the chairman or by all commissioners? However you like it. It can be by the let's, chairman. Just by chairman. Yeah. It's easier. So do we have a motion for that? Have a motion to approve the chairman signing a letter of engagement for what was it? Fairfield and Woods uh, and Connie Brooks. Okay. Legal counsel. Did you get that sound? Thank you. Okay. It's motion by Commissioner Wendling. Do I have a second? I can second that. Second by Commissioner Toman. Any discussion? What is the cost going to be for the county on that? Uh, uh, it will be within the parameters set here. The twenty we can spend up to twenty six thousand through okay. Fenner, but plus the seven thousand, but we're hoping will be mostly uh, in kind. I just wanted that out. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Good catch. Any other discussion? All right. Motion on the table um, to um, Fairfield to um, send a letter of engagement to Fairfield and Wood and Associates. So, um, all in favor with an aye. 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 All opposed. Same sign. Motion passes. Any other updates from you from um, Mrs. Toman? I have one other, but it's in pre-decisional. Now, is it? Yes. Is that going to be an executive or? Okay. Pre-decisional. So nothing else under tab R for you, right, Commissioner Tom? No, thank you. Thank you for the updates. Um, any other questions from the chair, uh, from the rest of the co commission before we move forward? No, just, just like to thank Commissioner Toman. Thank you. It's not done yet, though, so you better hold. No. <laughs> All right. But it's nice to have the updates. It is. In public lands. So we'll move to tab S, which is Bonnie Berry budget and audit schedules discussion. So I'll turn it over to um, Bonnie. Good morning again, Chairman and Commissioners. Morning, um, so there are three parts to this agenda item. Uh, the first one is the budget schedule for fiscal year 2023 budget that we will be doing now starting now, well, we've kind of already started it with our budget workshops, but um, every year about this time, I come and present just a preliminary budget schedule just to get your input on any changes you'd like to make. Um, there are a couple dates in here that are uh, state statute. By state statute, we have to comply with a few of these things um, by certain dates. Um, the Just to, to name a few of them, the on the um, Tuesday, April 19th, the presentation of the fiscal year 23 budget request filing in the county commissioner meeting that has to be done by the 15th of May. So that falls in line with that. And then we also have to approve the budget, which we have scheduled on this um, June 23rd. Um, that doesn't have to be actually done until July, but we've been done, doing it in June just so we have a budget set before the fiscal year starts. So as of July 1st. Um, the departments and elected officials can start spending money out of their budget. And then also the advertisement has to be a week before that 
um, public hearing. But those are the, the dates set by state statute. Um, so we do have to comply with those dates. But other than that, this is your decision. So are there any changes you would like to make this to this discussion you <coughs> want to have about it? Or do things look good? I know you're changing the the procedures procedures and processes a little bit this year, so I don't know if you wanted to make some changes to this or not. I just wanted your input before I send this out. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Wendley. You know, I, I think uh, if it's possible, leave this as it is and see how it uh, integrates with the uh, other stuff that we've worked on um, rather than guess. But uh, I, I just like to see how it works and then we can make adjustments for next year mm -hmm. if we need to. Okay. Um, let's pilot it and see how it works. Yeah, um, sure. Um, Commissioner Wendling, I would agree. I think we've uh, finagled the form and moved things around as much as we can. And I think true due diligence has been given to that process. And I think the only way at this point to determine its effectiveness or what changes it needs is to actually run it through the process. And I think that um, we have vetted it out and it's ready to go. Um, and so I would agree. Are you ready, Ms. Berry? <laughs> For the budget? Yes. No, I'm still trying to get caught up from being behind on the audit. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so are we gonna, are, are we okay moving forward with the schedule then? Yes. Okay, and this was just a discussion, no motion yeah. needs to be passed or anything. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. Yeah. Okay, the next item that I have is just the um, funding request form. And this is the last updated one that you have seen. This was actually mm -hmm. updated in December. And I know Roy has since um, reached out to some of the component units and outside agencies mm -hmm. regarding this. Um, but this is the last of the input I've gotten. So um, I am, I would love to hear any more input. I know you had mentioned that there was a little bit more space needed for some of these. Yeah, I'll get with you in the uh, next week too. So okay. we'll take a look at that. Okay, are there And it's pretty there? much, I think, looking at, can we make it a fillable form in some spots? Yes. And then a couple extra spaces in a couple other spots. So it won't be much to tweak. Yes. Um, once the form is complete, I will make it fillable. It's, okay. It's just easier to do it. Absolutely. Finish the form before you make yes. it a fillable form. And that's probably so. the most significant change is just making sure it's fillable. But I'll get you the other couple little changes. Okay. All right. Any other comments, questions, anything else on that? Fillable and addable. Add. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, I can. Yeah, do that. it's always so, in draft. Um, always a living document. Mm -hmm. There won't be many places to add. Um, just on the um, probably just on the organizational financial information, the balance sheet information, which is very minimal, and also the income state, income statement information. Um, we'll add, but I don't, I don't really don't think there's much else in there to make a uh, formulas in there to add. So, okay. I will do that. I will just, okay. let me make a note of that. So I don't forget. So fillable. And okay. All right. The third item is the audit schedule. I have sent this um, to the auditors and Stephanie, she actually took a while to get back to me. So she has recommended some changes. Um, so on your schedule where it has, I believe October 31st, she's wanted to move a couple of these items up by one week, basically their field work that they're doing. Um, so she wants me to have the trial balances done a week earlier. So October 24th instead of 31st. And then she wanted to have a week in office, in their office. She wanted that moved up a week and then a week of their field work on site. Um, she wanted that moved up by week two. They're usually here for two weeks. And then um, she wanted me to complete the financial statements and provide those to the auditors by November 7th, a week earlier. So those are the just those four on there that she had suggested that we change just to allow them to have a little bit more time um, with the Thanksgiving holiday and everything just to wrap things up. Are there any concerns with those changes? Any concerns with the initial schedule? Um, fellow commissioners, any concerns with what's been presented to you by Ms. Berry or any questions? Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. Wendling. Not a concern, but Bonnie, um, the changing for a week earlier, that'll work for you and for uh, Christina, because I know she does the grants end of it, doesn't she? She does do the grants end of it. So it'll work with me. I have not checked with Christina yet, but I would be happy to check with her. Yeah, please do. Okay. Yeah, and then the second question is, is if they're not going to spend a second week here on site. They will spend a second week. The two weeks just got moved up. Okay, very good. Thank you. Because I initially had them um, November 7th to the, I took it off my schedule, but it would have been the 18th. Oh, and they cool. moved that up. They wanted to be here October 31st to November 11th. Right. So those two weeks. And then Thanks. they'll do their preliminary field work from there. Right. office the week before that instead thank of you. october 31st they'll be doing that the week of october 24th thank you for so it'll still be three weeks total and two weeks on site all right thank you and they also do a week on site in august, august too yeah, for the component again. units all right any other questions for Ms. barry all right i don't think any actions needed on any of that correct uh commissioner uh commission correct mr de Leon? yeah no action okay. All right, we appreciate your time and all your effort and help, and, and we look forward to getting into the budget process, which I have to just be honest and share with our constituents, and I'm excited to know that we've already started our budget discussions, which is significantly farther ahead than typical, and I think it just shows us wanting to be a little more proactive in that process and not really try to do a, a multi-million, $47 million budget in two days. So I'm really excited that we are being proactive and moving ahead in that process. So thank you for your help in that. And thank you for your input on these schedules in the form. All and right. That, please get with me, Chairman Floyd, and let thank me you. know what changes you want me to make because okay, I will I'll be get getting you, this Bonnie. out in a few weeks. Okay, thank, so thank you. you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Um, board T, we're gonna get to some, um, we're gonna do some board appointments. The first board appointment is for Combined Communication Joint Powers Board. I would actually like to have our board consider to postpone that till next week to take a little bit of look at some new information brought to us before we make that appointment. Um, any questions or any um, any dis dissenting opinions to that? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Wendling. Yeah, I completely agree that we postpone it for till the next meeting rather than next week. Yes, next meeting. So, All right, thank you. Did I say next week? Holy word. Yeah, you, okay. yeah, yeah you're okay. We knew what you meant, but <laughs> when see, comes to, so it comes to a board appointment, I hate to see somebody show up and we're not here for them. So, so let me meeting. clarify to next meeting. So, so I, I'll make a motion to um, postpone the combined communication joint power board, board appointments till our next meeting, which is March, we we'll have a second to postpone. March 1st. Yep, March 1st. We we'll have a second. 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 Second, second by Commissioner was... Shamefeld. No. Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I got this, oh, Doug. No. I got take, this. So, all right. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no more discussion, all in favor of postponing this until next meeting um, with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. All right, we'll move on to the next board appointment which is the Solid Waste Disposal District Board. Um, there is two expiring terms, Larissa, Larissa Appel, Apel and RJ Piper, um, that we did not receive an application from RJ and um, we did receive one from Larissa Appel. We don't really have a liaison to this board, do we? So no, no. hearing that we don't, um, there are, um, Two open positions. We also have four people that have applied. Charlotte Doak, Celeste Black, Sheldon Beard, and Lars Nandrup. So I'll just go down the table and see what anyone recommends and what they're thinking. So I'll start with Commissioner Wendling and his recommendations, and then we'll go down the table. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank RJ, you know, and uh, I didn't hear that he applied at all. Sometimes they come in late, but he must... Uh, uh, feel he needs to be off the board, but he's he's done a good job. He's helped helped with that board and uh, invest in it. So I want to thank him for his time uh, that he put into that board. Uh, my uh, so for the two of them, of course, uh, first thing I'd like to say is uh, support the reappointment of uh, Larissa Apple, and then uh, she's done a good job, and she's of course uh, 
has background in, in environmental science. So that, that's a good choice for the, to continue. And then uh, outside of that, uh, I, uh, I think uh, it's hard to make a decision. So I'll support my commissioners because Celeste Black or Sheldon Beard or Lars Nandrup. So that's where I'm at. Okay. Hard, hard to pick out that second one. Yeah. Commissioner Shanefield, your thoughts? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also just wanted to thank everybody that is a new applicant that put in. It takes a lot of time and effort to, you know, throw yourself out there to do these kinds of things. And um, I also support the reappointment of Larissa. And I would also support Celeste Black as being a new um, applicant or new, um, oh my gosh, appointment um, to that board. Ms. Toman, your thoughts? I, I, I'm not familiar with any of the applicants, so I guess I would pass on this right now. Okay. Um, I would, in my review, I also want to thank RJ. He came into that board when we couldn't get anyone to apply for that board. If I remember right, there was a point in time when I first became a commissioner, and even before that, where people weren't applying to be on that board. And then everything kind of erupted with the um, recycling center. And then we had kind of a resurgence in that group. So um, RJ stepped up to the plate when no one else would. So I, I do want to thank RJ for coming um, and serving during a time that was tumultuous and really helping get that board going in a good direction. I myself would also um, um, support Ms. Appel Apple um, to be reappointed due to her history and knowledge. And then I would agree, um, in, I don't really know very many of the other candidates, but looking at the applications, I would side with um, Commissioner Toman that I think uh, Ms. Black would be a good appointment. So I would, so um, all three appreciate their application and their wanting to serve in the community and think they would do a great job, but I would support the concept of Celeste Black and and um, Ms. A and Ms. Um, Larissa Apple. So can I, um, so any other discussion? Any other comments? Okay, so um, commissioners, um, uh, if someone would like to make a motion on to the appointment for the solid waste disposal district number one, I would I would be open for a motion at this point. Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Shanefield. I will make a motion to reappoint um, Larissa Appel and um, appoint Celeste Black to the solid waste district. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move forward with a vote. And so all in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. <clears throat> like to thank all of our applicants, but we will be appointing um, Celeste Black and Larissa Apple to that board. So thank you guys and thank you for the good discussion. The last one, the next one, not is the last one, um, as we slide down, would be the Joint Waters um, Power Board. Um, and um, is that you, Doc? Are you on this board? You know, I'm not on the board, nor am I a liaison, but I've, I've worked closely with uh, that board. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, um, members on there, but uh, that board basically, for the most part, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, their board appointment is uh, the person that is termed up, which is Hillary Huckfeld. She is eligible for reappointment. And... Uh, the, there's a letter in your packet, mm -hmm. and uh, it's written in support of reappointing right. uh, Ms. Hillary Huckfelt. Uh, it was, of course, when you read the date and time, that's mm -hmm. when I served chairman. So really, it's written to the board as a whole. And so therefore, uh, uh, she is eligible. Um, so I uh, personally think uh, from the, based on the letter, my observation is, um, this is worthy of reappointment. Ms. Hick, Ms. Hick, I'm sorry, Ms. Okay. Ms. Huckfeld is worthy and I'll support for her reappointment. Okay. Commissioner Shanefeld, your thoughts? I agree. And um, Ms. Toman, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay. So can I get a motion to appoint Hillary Huckfeld for a reappointment to the um, 
Joint Waters Power Board. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Winley. I'll make a motion that we reappoint Hillary Huckfelt to the um, Joint Water Powers Board. We have a motion from Commissioner Wendling. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanfeld. Any discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. The one the half of the crowd has been waiting for now is up now, <laughs> and that's the uh, board appointment for the SEDC board. Um, and um, I will turn that over to the liaison to that board and then also to be shared with the, uh, uh, yeah, we'll go to the liaison of that board, which is actually um, Commissioner Wendley. Thank you, Mr. And Chairman. And just before I get there, Doc, I apologize. There are three appointments to be made based upon the new bylaws and changes. There will be a one-year appointment, a two-year appointment, and a three-year appointment. And we did receive multiple applications from Mark Lyon, uh, Devin Brubaker, Mark Dell, Mark Cohen, Jessica Evans, Ryan Pauly, and Candy Pendleton. So we have a great slate of candidates. We have determined a fancy way of how to figure out who gets the one, two, and three year, but we'll get there in a second. So um, I will turn it over to the liaison. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we do have uh, three appointments. Uh, and the appointments uh, will be designated a one, two, or three year. Uh, Devin Brubaker is a um, re, um, is applying, and he is presently on the board. Also, I'd like to uh, inform public that uh, the commissioners uh, appointed Commissioner Shane Field to that board. So that is one of the three positions. And uh, as much as commissioner's name is not listed, I believe. As I look at it, yeah, it is not. Um, she will be considered, uh, and the, the and, and I will uh, right up front make uh, let the board know that I'll be making a motion um, for her to be reappointed, and then uh, also uh, we had uh, Eric Bingham on the board. I'd like to thank him for his time, but uh, it's time for him to step back and uh, allow for a new appointment. And that new appointment will come from uh, Mark Lyon, Mark Dale, Mark Cowan, Jessica Evans, Ryan Pauly, and Candy Pendleton. I just want to say to those people, thank you uh, for stepping up. Uh, like Commissioner Shanefield had mentioned for the other boards, that uh, you know it, it's it's a great paying job. Got to put in a lot of time, and it's wonderful that people are willing to step forward because there has been a time when people would not. So I want to just say thank you to all those people. But uh, unfortunately, there's out of that group, uh, there's only going to be two, two people selected, but those names will stay on file, Sally, for two years. So if someone has to get off, we can fulfill a term with those as well as anybody else that may apply. So um, Mr. Uh, Chairman, what I think we ought to do is, I think, first of all, I think it's important that each commissioner looks at the list and makes their recommendation um, out of that list. I'll listen very carefully. I have been in visitation with those, uh, with everything. Um, I am going to up, up front uh, 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 let you know that uh, I'll make mine after I hear what you have to say about your uh, people you're thinking. Um, but at the same token, uh, I want to hear why before I uh, make a recommendation. Also, Mr. Chairman and fellow commissioners, I have three pieces of paper here. And on the papers, it says one year, two year, three year. <laughs> and as we appoint, also we also have here. this really, really sweet smelling cowboy hat. <laughs> Adam. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> Going to put them in. So, let them before us. So, and when we're ready, what I'll do is I'll make a motion to appoint one of the three, and I'll leave blank. Stop at the year. I would ask that uh, Sally would come up and draw one piece of paper, open it up, and that's that will be that year's term. Okay. Are we okay with that? Yeah, there's really no scientific method to really do that. So we'll do this. So um, with that being said, um, outside of yourself, Commissioner Sanfield, let's get your opinion on who you would like to see appointed to this um, 
this board that um, Mary will share, I'll share, then Doc will share, then we'll make a, then a motion will be made. So uh, Commissioner Shanfield, you? Um, absolutely, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I have had the opportunity to work with Devin on this board and he is very, very dedicated to continuing with economic development in our community. He's done a great job. So he would be my first, um, my first option. And then I believe that we need to pull in some of the business community. And so I really think that Mark Cohen um, offers that to us. Um, and I think that he would be another great addition. So those are my two picks. Commissioner Tillman, your thoughts. I would recommend Commissioner Shane Field, Devin Brubaker, and Mark Dale from First Bank. Uh, Mark is very excited and has been working with Uinta County and, and uh, Evanston. And I think he would bring a lot to the board. Um, that brings me up my thoughts. Um, I want to tell you, it's really great to look at the slate because this slate of candidates are really top notch. There's not a bad person involved. And, um, and um, um, I, I would support Commissioner Shanfeld, not only because we need someone from the commission there, but I think her knowledge in broadband is um, is essential as we look at economic development, and she's probably one of our stronger people in that knowledge area in the community. Um, I also reached out to Eric just to get some opinions, and you know, being kind of our our our, our department director in that area, just to see. And um, um, I would also recommend, based upon some of the conversations, to continue with Devin, as Devin seems to really have improved and stepped up, and really been an integral part of this board. And then the last is. I, I, I would I could be good with Mark Dell or Mark Cohen. Um, I would probably lean toward Mark Cohen based upon recommendation of the board, but I do think both would be fantastic members. But I, I also can't discount what I think um, Mark Lyon, Jessica Evans, and Candy T Pendleton could actually bring to this board also. So, um, but I think if I was to go three official, it would be Devin, Mark Cohen, with Mark Dell a close second there, and then also. Um, uh, Commissioner Shanfeld. So um, I will turn that over to you, um, Commissioner, to the liaison for final recommendations. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Well, I'll make my final recommendations when I uh, make uh, a nomination, that type of thing, and they're going to fall right in line with uh, what I've been hearing from all from you other three. The uh, one thing I, I I just it's hard. These these are good people. They all have good. Uh, uh, resumes, no matter what that looks like, their applications look good. And uh, I, I'm really, really pleased because when I think of where this uh, started uh, six years ago, when uh, Governor Meade walked in to a uh, meeting with uh, mayors and, and commission, not all commissioners, but the mayors and and a couple of commissioners and uh, some of the leadership and said, hey, we need to put something together so we can set up Sweetwater County for possibly uh, consideration as an industrial site. And when they were starting the Endow project. And uh, I remember the uh, Rock Springs Chamber immediately jumped in because they were part of the lead and said, hey, We'll work on it from here. So a group of people and uh, that group of people, um, for the most part, when I look in this room and uh, Eric helped me out, but there's only three people from that original committee in this room. At that time, it was Kayla McDonald. She was working with the chamber. And I think Kayla was basically um, told that she would do the work heavy lifting and, Tom, and Mr. Hanks would help her. Then the other one, of course, was uh, Mr. Bingham, who's still with us in the county and uh, coming out of Pliny Zoning. And then as a uh, uh, liaison and at that time, newly elected com commissioner, I was uh, assigned to that group and as uh, the primary candidate. And then when I look at where that started working on that, uh, filling out that sheet to be considered and see where it's come today with volunteers, I'm, I'm totally amazed. Now I know, I know in many ways people are saying, well, where, where are the outcomes? Well, there's many hidden outcomes from SEDC that uh, don't get publicized and that, but there's work and there's been some positive results. And I'd like to sit here and 
check them off in a checklist. But I think if anybody's interested in those, they need to attend the SADC meetings and listen in and get those results rather than look here for them. Of course, where it's at now with the two cities and the county um, in a MOU for shared expenses and and things for moving forward and that type of thing, I, I think uh, I'm just amazed. I've been able to watch it grow and be a part of it. So with that, commissioners, uh, just a quick update of where it's come from and where it's at right now. First thing I would like to do is I would like to make a motion okay. that we appoint Commissioner Shanefield to the, and the drawing is? Well, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Open it up, please. And the winner for Commissioner Shanefield is? How do you like that sealed envelope? <laughs> you have Did you have sticky on it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Shanefield for a one year term. So we have SCDC a motion board. for Commissioner Shanefield for a one year term on the SCDC board. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Toman. Any discussion? All in favor, um, please vote with an aye. 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 And, and that would be one abstain vote. Uh, so Matt, um, any, uh, any opposed? None opposed. So let the record show it was a 3-0 vote with one abstention. And the abstention was Commissioner Shanefeld. So congratulations on your lucky hat, one year appointment. All right. All right. You... Um, I'll entertain a motion for the next member of the SCDC board. All right, Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion that we reappoint Devin Brubaker to a to the and the winner is or he wins the two year term. Mr. Brubaker is on for the two year term. That's my motion. So the motion is uh, Devin Brubaker to the SCDC board for a two year term. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Shanefeld with a second. Any discussion? All in favor with an aye? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Brubaker. You get two more years on the SCDC board. Yes. And our final motion uh, for the last board member. I'm Mr. Sure Chairman, to, just to Which know. will be the three-year term. Very good. So we don't have to do the pomp and circumstances <laughs> of the hat. Oh, it's not. It was we well, got to show it. It's a three year though. Oh, would you open it, Sally, and tell me? Yeah, if it says one year and you throw this whole yeah. process, out. I know it. Throw it out. Look at that. <laughs> okay. She pulled the rabbit out of the hat. All it's right. a three year All term. Right. So, so, Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion that we appoint Mark Cowan to the three year term for the SCDC board. All right. We have the motion is for Mark Cowan to be um, the representative for the three year term on the SCDC board. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? The only discussion I would throw out is just one more throw out to all the other candidates who are very viable candidates. And this is a great problem to have. I hope we continue to have this on some of our board appointments. So with that being said, uh, um, we have a motion and a second. Um, so all in favor with an aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Congratulations, Mr. Cowan, to the lucky hat three-year term. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I will leave the ballots lie up here on the table. So if anybody wants to check them for authenticity. <laughs> thank you. I need to see your ID to that. Okay. So with that being said, we're going to move on to tab U. And, um, and actually, my recommendation is... Um, um, last night, Jeff did call me late at night, about 9.45, as I previously mentioned, to take the meeting. And was we were looking at the agenda, we probably had an oversight in looking at the discussion on representatives like the county department elected officials, which would have been led by Jeff and his appointment. So I would actually look toward a, a motion to postpone that till the next meeting. I won't say week this time, next meeting. Um, and that way, Jeff can lead that discussion because he's the one making the appointments as the board chair. So... Any comments or discussion from the commissioners regarding that thought? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wendling? I agree. Okay. We'll mark that on the calendar. And then also, I'm looking for a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Wendling. 
I'll make motion that we postpone tab U discussion on representatives for county departments, elected officials until the next meeting, March 1st, okay. 2022. Do we have a second? I'll second that. All right, any discussion? I would say just the only matter of discussion is that, so at this point, the, the old liaisons will continue till the new decisions are made. And so if anyone's concerned of who their liaison is, it will be the continued the pattern of where we're at now. So any, um, so that being said, there is a motion on the table. Um, do I, um, all in favor, vote for an, uh, with an aye? Aye. aye? aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, lucky, none of us have new appointments until next meeting, so. Um, we're now at Commissioner Reports, and Commissioner Smith is not here. He did not leave me with his report. So we will move to Commissioner Sanfeld. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so first, the museum is preparing for the annual quilt show in the courthouse. Um, they are planning a modest exhibit opening, is what he told me, um, with the quilt, quilt guild um, on March 1st with cookies and refreshments. So look for the advertisement on that. Um, they're also planning some children's activities and um, some things for kids to design their own quilt and do some other interactives. Um, and they also have a history fair that's coming up in May that they're starting to work on and scheduling classes and arranging buses and doing other things for that event. Um, so they have invited every third grade class in the county, including homeschooled kids, and they are expecting um, as many as 700 students. So that's exciting. Um, great job. Um, SEDC, they have, um, in our last meeting, we had discussion around the budget and board terms that are within the new bylaws. Um, and then Kayla's also been working on a number of new leads that have come in and have kept her busy. Um, I've also had the opportunity to meet with Marty, um, Gary, and Jean since our last meeting, um, and um, Eric as well, um, since our last meeting and just reviewed how things are going um, and got some information. Um, and then I've had a number of conversations about the specific purpose tax um, um, moving forward with the proposal to look at um, projects. Um, I've heard both extreme options, both for and against. Um, and I've also had the opportunity to clarify some concerns and to answer some questions and things like that um, that have come up. So I will also be going to the Green River City Council board meeting or City Council meeting tonight. Um, just to kind of review what we decided last um, meeting and answer any questions that they may have. Um, and then I believe I met with um, uh, City Councilman Robinson from Rock Springs, and I believe that um, they are going to be having Turncore come and meet with their council to answer any questions in the next few weeks as well. So I think that is all that I have short and sweet today. All right, any questions for Commissioner Sanfeld? If not, nice report. Thank you, Commissioner Sanfeld. And we'll move to Commissioner Toman. Thank you. It's been a very busy two weeks, is all I can tell you. <laughs> February 2nd, attended the federal agency uh, breakfast meeting that we always have with the uh, federal agencies. Uh, the new updates on BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, they we finally do have an official state director, Andrew Archuleta from Colorado. Uh, we have an acting high desert district director is Melissa Towers, who is the regional fire commander out of Boise, who is acting as regional. Uh, she's a budget type person, but she might be someone we might want to visit with. She didn't attend the meeting that day, but she is our acting until uh, they uh, hire someone for the High Desert District, which is the boss over the five um, BLM offices. February 3rd, Pacific Atlantic Soda uh, cooperating meeting is scoping the end of this month. As I mentioned earlier, we are 20 months away from a final record of decision for those plants. Met with the legislators at the Broadway Theater. There were 16 legislators there. Very good meeting, talking about what they're doing at the uh, will be doing at the legislature. And we will be, some of us, attending next week for three or four, five days, various days. February 5th, uh, attended the Conservatives and Crimson Gala of over 160 uh, attendees from Uinta, Sweetwater, and Carbon County. It was a very nice event. So thank you to those uh, people who planned that. February 7th, the budget workshop with the elected officials. That was, I think, a positive. The elected officials seemed to be excited to be able to give us a a pre-budget uh, update or uh, what to expect. 
February 9th, integrated working group with Wyoming Coal Community, some ideas uh, for grants and, and information. Uh, went to Planning and Zoning Commission and shared our land and research use plan and asked them to help review it or pre-review it before it goes public. Uh, well, that will be public, but <laughs> anyway, they'll be on one of our review boards. Did a Zoom meeting, an uh, hour and a half on the Natrium Planet camera. That was very interesting. Uh, it was a stakeholder meeting. I think they said they had, well, they had 200 people on, on Zoom, but they answered every possible question that they could think of. So they will continue to have those. So that was also uh, very interesting and something we need to gear up for. We will feel the impact of that, uh, of that plant operation. Attended WCCA video conference. Uh, I have an update on County Fire, the special committee that we've been working on. Um, we're getting close and we will have options for the commission to consider at our March, at our March meeting. I do have a, a, a report of what we've done. We've had at least seven subcommittee meetings uh, with Gene Ligursky, Mike Barnesium, um, Commissioner Lloyd, myself, Gary McLean, who else? John DeLeon and oh, Gary. John DeLeon, yeah. And Jane Ligursky. Yeah, I got those. Uh, we've met with the county fire warden, with Wamsetter, Green River Fire Chiefs and City Administrator, Green River City Council and Workshop, High Desert District BLM, Fire District Number One, Granger Fire District Chief. The committee did not meet with the City of Rock Springs as they primarily provide services within the City of Rock Springs, but they were contacted. <clears throat> In meetings with the entities, the committee has discussed and are obtained the following information. So it's been an information gathering thing. Uh, we are not doing away with county fire. We're, there will be county fire support, but we're just trying to gather all the information as we have 10 fire entities in this county. So if we can uh, determine efficiencies and uh, better service, that's what we will be offering to the commission to select from. Apparatus lists, all kinds of trucks, types, capabilities, and equipment, number of staff, capabilities of their staff, physical locations within each jurisdiction, uh, fire call from each entity if available. Based upon this information, the Public Works Department has uploaded the call data into the county GIS system such that call information could be analyzed using a mapping interface rather than spreadsheet data. The committee has received proposals from uh, City of Green River to provide services for the western portion of the county, um, Fire District 1 for the east, south, and north portions of the county. Town of Wamsutter has already taken calls uh, on the eastern side along the interstate corridor. The committee will be meeting to review these proposals with the intent of being ready to present findings and recommendations at the March 2nd meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. So our subcommittee, Mr. Bordesian, we will be meeting to review all of our options that we will be taken to the uh, board before we go to the board. So that's what I have on the fire update. Um, let's see, uh, went to the ambulance board meeting on February 10th. Um, February 12th, NACO, the National Association of County Officials. I attended the Public Land Steering Committee all day Saturday. Very interesting. Passed some resolutions that are right in line with what we are talking about with our comments on Waters of the USA, the sage grouse, uh, uh, the sage brush habitat uh, implementation. We received, uh, we also passed uh, resolutions on um, healthy forests and fire suppression. Um, Tracy Stone Manning, the new BLM director, talked about the funding and uh, one of the projects that may be available to or will be available to Wyoming is the $1.1 billion for cleanup of orphan gas wells. 25 million will be given to each state. So we should begin working with the BLM to see if there are well, I know there are orphan gas wells that we could clean up because a lot of them have uh, reverted to sagebrush and uh, or not sagebrush, but to uh, invasive weeds. So that may be an option for us for the county to work with the uh, federal agencies and state agencies. Um, we also heard from Martha Williams, the acting U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service director. She is probably going to be appointed as the director. Um, 
they have 1.4 million for ecosystem projects. Uh, and both uh, directors talked about conservation is a shared responsibility, but they talked about increased cooperation and working with local entities. And I, I hope it's true. I, I don't know so far. I'm not sure about that. But the sage grouse plan had not been reviewed with our local federal agencies. And to me, that's very uh, disconcerting. Recreation and infrastructure is 80% exposure and 10% footprint. And so they're trying to invest money in our infrastructure, in our forests, and in our, uh, fed on our federal lands because they, they do realize that that has uh, deteriorated over the years. And we have more and more people wanting to be out and recreating. Airport board meets at one o'clock today. Probably missed that. <laughs> Sorry, Devin. <laughs> And at NACO, President Biden did speak at 11.30 today, but we also missed that. Ashley National Forest, our MOU uh, as a cooperator uh, will be coming up for re-signature. And I have not received a draft yet, but when I do, I'll bring it to the commission. Uh, our federal agency update, I've reached out to our federal partners and as so far it appears it may be like the third Tuesday, the 19th of April might be a good day for our federal agency partner update. So that is my report. Thank you for the report. Any questions for um, Commissioner Toman? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Commissioner Wendling. Oh, yes. Commissioner Toman on the, the grant for the abandoned gas wells that sure state that has what 25 million will be given to each state each state now i'm not is, sure do we how. have a do, okay so you're not sure okay i was just going to ask if if possible for this county if we can de designate a priority area to do first that type of thing so Maybe it's a discussion we could have with uh, Kimberly at the BLM federal meeting on uh, first All right. Wednesday. Let's, we'll find out more then. But yeah, that yeah. right away, because yeah. first thing that triggers my mind is, uh, you know, some of those areas that are close to some very important areas in the county that they get cleaned up first if if we get any money. Yep. Okay, well, and, I, with uh, being the eighth largest county in the United States and... <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Acres, I, hope, I hope we can get some of that money, but it's just trying to figure out how to channel it. The conservation well, may be able to act as a funding pass through to get uh, groups to uh, go out and do well, some of the cleanup if that's. Well, if with, that's with the thought of the eighth option. largest county, we're also bigger than six other states in the United yeah. States. Right. Mm -hmm. So that might carry a little more weight. I'm hoping. Yeah. And then I uh, appreciate your fire re review. Um, when I when I look at it and that type of thing, um, the committee's been able to meet as a whole with all those groups. Yes. As a whole. Yes, as a whole. Okay, very good. And the one thing that would be important about for the committee to visit with Rock Springs Fire Chief is because he was a former uh, fire warden for Sweetwater County before he, or district. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So he might be a valuable resource uh, to talk with and that type of thing. And uh, appreciate the committee keeping our uh, fire warden in the loop and having him at the meetings. I, I, that's very important. So outside of that, that's the questions I had. Thank you. Good report. Thank you. Yes, good report. And now I will move on to my report. First of all, want to give a big shish boom rod to the Green River Varsity co-ed game day cheers. They took fifth in the country. They were state champions last week, but our Green River High School cheer team went to nationals and took fifth, which is actually pretty awesome. Also want to wish um, um, my, the sport that's near and dear to my heart, the Green River and Rock Springs wrestling teams luck at regionals this weekend. As far as uh, liaison and commissioner duties, um, I'm remiss that I didn't share at the last meeting at the Golden Hour Senior Center that um, Jackie Grubb has resigned as the director at the Golden Hour Senior Center to take a position at um, the community college. And what was the community college's gain is truly the senior center's loss. And um, they currently have a committee and, they, and they've closed applications and have started interviews for that position. But I just wanna personally thank Jackie for what was really an outstanding job at the senior center and the programs. And um, due to my personal line of work outside of being a commissioner, um, I have a lot of time and opportunities to spend at the commission at the uh, senior 
center. And I can tell you, um, her and her staff have a huge impact on the lives of many people. And if you don't believe it, go about 12 o'clock to the Golden Hour building and look at this line around the building doing pickup mills. And actually, um, um, there are other communities that are no longer doing pickup, either just inside or delivered mills. And they continue to do that. And it's a pretty outstanding service. So I want to just commend Jackie. Um, we do have a board meeting next week, but I will be unable to attend, which is my next meet, uh, next item. I will be out of town next weekend, um, next week uh, with multiple of my fellow commissioners at, um, at the legislative session and at the state commissioner meetings um, representing our county and um, taking a look at legislation, meeting with local legislators, doing some lobbying, and we'll be there. Um, I will probably stay through um, Thursday personally. Um, and do commissioner um, in residence that day, to be honest. So um, that's my plan, but I won't be at that board meeting, but um, next week I am really looking forward to the, um, the Waco conference, uh, the, well, the county commissioner, the state com county commissioner conference. Um, last night, we had a tripartite board meeting. Um, and, um, you know, um, really just kind of took a look at our current um, budget, reallocated some of our money to make sure we could use all of that money through the different low income populations. We're able to distribute that money. And every time I sit on the tripartite board meeting, I, I'm, I'm really amazed to hear some of the work some of these local organizations are doing. Um, when you look at the Community Resource Center, they gave us a, a number last time of how much through the money we're able to, a little bit of the money we're able to give them through this, um, the tripartite board, but then the other ARPA grant monies that are out there and how much we've helped with rental assistance. And it's amazing the impact these groups are making, the YWCA, uh, the senior centers, um, it, it's really amazing. So a big thanks to them and the tripartite board. Um, um, we will, um, it, Lauren, we have an intergovernmental meeting on the 17th, correct? Um, I do want to let folks know that um, I will possibly not be at that meeting. Um, um, I'm going to try to do it by phone as we travel, but um, um, I will be heading to Lander to um, watch my son wrestle the next day. And so I will go take the meeting as far as the uh, coverage and Verizon will let me go. Um, but I'm going to head up the night before so we can make sure we get to watch him wrestle. But um. Um, but if any constituents have any questions about my stance on the, the current tax proposal, please feel free out to reach with me. Um, I will not have office hours tomorrow because I have another committee meeting, but I will be in the build, be, building meeting with Christi, Christina at 815 and be here till about 945. So if anyone needs me, they can reach out to um, me in my office or Christina's office. Um, I also continue to meet with Christina almost weekly on the ARPA funding and the different things going on within ARPA as we continue to get more information. And she is reaching out to the different commissioners and, and sharing information as she has that to get ready to make some presentations. Um, and I think um, I just continue to meet with um, various department heads, uh, directors and elected officials on a continuous basis um, as we move forward um, with different projects. So that's all I have. Unless there, if, if there's unless there's any questions for me, hearing none, I'm going to toss it over to Commissioner Wenley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, did attend uh, the uh, on February third, uh, right after our meeting, the uh, Rock Springs uh, sponsored uh, legislative panel and social that. Uh, the uh, legislators that were heading down to Cheyenne visited with the public. I, I believe most of them were there. There were a couple of them that are on the east side of the county and and further away that didn't make it and, and that type of thing, but they are pr pretty standy where they're at. It uh, uh, was a good, good forum. I'd like to thank the Rock Springs Chamber for sponsoring it. And uh, afterwards, uh, there was a social where you could talk individually with uh, the uh, senators and representatives uh, uh, with regard to uh, their topics, uh, I think it was there was a little bit of a disappointment. And I, I, you know, I debated whether I was going to say anything today or not. But I think it's it's fair to say that uh, when someone makes a statement that uh, Wyoming elected officials are dishonorable, it uh, kind of disappoints me because uh, I'm an elected official, and there's many of them sitting in this room many that are not. And uh, I just think that's unfair that uh, somebody would say that about people that, uh, you know, leave their jobs 
and do the things that they do do for the state, the county and the cities and that type of thing. And uh, I, I just, uh, just raises a hair on the back. My, it did that night. I did address it, uh, you know, in many ways, every elected official is honorable in the way they feel that they need to operate. Um, being dishonorable is to be judged by somebody higher than myself, not by any state senator or whatever. But uh, I, I uh, just want you to know, uh, commissioners, as much as I heard that statement and the first ones I thought about was ourselves, um, I feel that I'm working with an honorable group. We may not always disagree. We may have those individual uh, um, conversations here at this table, but when it's over, it's over. The vote's down, it goes. I also believe in this county, we work with honorable elected people. Um, I'm, I was really disappointed in that. So I'm sorry I took this platform to talk about that, but I think it's fair to um, bring it up. Um, and uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. That's all I'll say on that. The other thing is, uh, I, uh, can, I didn't attend, but I, I zoomed the ambulance board meeting. I was, uh, it, it, uh, I got to think where the heck I was that day that I zoomed it, but it doesn't matter. But anyhow, it was a good meeting. Um, um, Commissioner Tolman, you can fill in the blanks if you like for me, but I forward to all the commissioners the ambulance numbers this morning, they're reporting that, so has everything there. Um, the discussion primarily focused on, hey, the status of where ambulance service was with uh, Castle Rock and their proposal. Castle Rock had, uh, was waiting, and I believe it was uh, they, they were going to be meeting uh, next month around the 7th and 8th with... Uh, the uh, organization that did the, uh, um, thank you very much. Yes. I knew you'd fill me in with Safe Deck to look at the recommendations for the county and then they'd be ready. Um, so that's what the focus was there with uh, Castle Rock. Um, the focus coming from one of the board members was a, uh, um, they're waiting, Rock Springs City Council is waiting for the dollar amount you know, what's going to happen, you know, what's going to cost and that type of thing. And uh, also uh, they're requesting um, what is the cost if Rock Springs stays part of Castle Rock or what's Castle Rock's uh, cost going to be if Rock Springs not part of it. So I, I that caught my attention real quickly um, in that. So we need to just be aware that I believe uh, Castle Rock will come forth and present those numbers. And then um, um, I guess uh, the committee, which at this point in time, how far it expands, that'll depend, but it's uh, Chairman Smith and uh, Councilman Tim Robinson and Councilwoman Sherry uh, Bushman. Thank you. And they'll expand it from there. So anyhow, we'll just wait and see how that comes out, but uh, caught my attention. I hope it does everybody else's that uh, there's that thought out there. Um, also, for all of us, uh, gosh darn, I'm sorry that I won't be with all four of you next week because uh, at the legislative session and and everything that's going on there, because it's always a great two and a half days and working with the legislators and that. But just uh, quickly, uh, um, this morning, I don't know if you had time to listen to Jeremiah's update. But every morning he will have that. He's got some great links that are there to find out how to contact representative senators. He also has on there, I believe, the legislative priorities uh, worksheet. And then in the Dropbox area, and I think you'll start seeing it showing up after uh, um, you visit and, and do the voting as a body as a whole will be the uh, issues and bills and of course on the worksheet right now the uh, WCCA's position as a body is not listed so uh, I did just print off a copy of it it's there for everybody so keep it you'll work on that and uh, also the big part about it is is on the uh, potential interest uh, bills of interest for for the uh, uh, WCCA I did sit in on the uh, uh, committee review, and I think once you pull that off the Dropbox, 
Um, you will be able to go through and look at the bills that have been thus far as of that meeting designated uh, issues for counties. And you'll be able to see not only staff recommendation, but you'll also see the bill review committee recommendation that I sat on on Wednesday. And you'll see it anywhere is listed from opposed, strongly opposed, a monitor and that type of thing. Um, so that's there, but it'll get updated on a regular basis. But uh, uh, I did print one off that I'll carry with me as I look at things. Uh, there'll be more added um, the and that type of thing. And then you as a body as a whole will vote on those like you have in the past. So anyhow, those those things are there and that type of thing. The other thing coming up that you'll discuss and uh, that and uh, I think Mary, you and I were at the last meeting when this was presented is that congressional tour pro proposal. Um, and uh, there's some costs there. So we'll have to uh, take a look at those. And, and previously there was support for it, but uh, now's the time that uh, when you're there, um, please, uh, I mean, you represent the county and you'll determine um, our vote. And uh, um, there's the four of you. So you got a majority. I'll support you. So I'm, I'm, I'm all in just to let you know. Also, uh, we've got a letter uh, that uh, from Eric that Gateway South, I believe, is going to continue, mm -hmm. as well as there are some other um, citing um, projects that are going to start going again, which again, too, will start providing dollars for designated uh, um, projects within that, uh, those sightings. So those are picking up. Um, I did, uh, I don't know how many of you watch closely, but uh, Pacific Core has uh, come out and announced that they're about their uh, pump storage hydropower. PSH, um, the hydropower is a type of electrical energy storage. The plants operate much like conventional hydropower plants, except uh, the plants can reuse water by pumping it back to an upper reservoir so that it can be used for generation once again. It's configured of two reservoirs located at different elevations and uh, conducted by a power plant that can generate energy as water moves from one from the upper reservoir through a turbine to the lower reservoir. Um, with that uh, pump storage, you're moving forward. Um, Pacific Core has uh, filed preliminary permit application with the Federal uh, Regu Energy Regulatory Commission for 11 sites in five Western states in October of 2021. One of the 11 sites, South Fork, which is located in Licken County, north of Kemmer, Wyoming. Um, this proposed site could take advantage of the existing infrastructure and water resources, which is the, I believe the, the um, what's the reservoir and the mine over there? Not yeah, Naughton Reservoir. And then of course they'd have to build a, another reservoir above it to uh, have it, to have that particular, um, uh, pump storage project. So we do know that there's one near Kemmer that's been proposed. Uh, I made copies of, of it that uh, from Pacific Core that I'll pass down for you to look at. Okay. okay. Gateway South. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, tonight, Mr. Bingham will be at the uh, Rock Spring City Council. Um, what's happening there is, uh, as we all know, part of that phase one of the Bitter Creek requires some uh, infrastructure on the uh, Rock Spring side of things. And so their uh, engineer, uh, public works director, Paul Kausich has been working with a grant with the state and I believe they'll submit their application, get approval to submit their application tonight. Is that correct, Eric? Yes, for the Middle Baxter. For Middle Baxter. Level two. Level two. So that end of it is moving forward, which is good. And then it'll move on to the state and hopefully get on their list for grant approvals and that type of thing. 
And lastly, um, I would like to say that uh, last week I, uh, uh, at uh, the request of the Rosenbauer uh, uh, Fire Production Unit uh, north of Minneapolis in a little town called Wyoming, Minnesota. I even took pictures of their, of their water tank. But anyhow, they built fire trucks and Rosenbauer is the one that was selected to build the fire truck for the grant from the feds. And uh, there was a lot of work there. I attended that with our fire warden, Mr. Bornazian. And uh, it was uh, exciting. It was, I mean, a base one, pre-con design. Uh, never experienced anything like this in my life before, but I'm telling you what, our fire chief knows fire trucks. And what he even knows better about the fire trucks when you can go out and look at one and look at it and say, nah, we're going to do this because it's going to work better for our firefighters. And then there's some work that comes. But I asked Chief to be here this morning because I'd like to give, have you have him just kind of fill in the blanks as to uh, what it was that uh, exactly occurred, what are the steps that uh, have that's been taken so far so that uh, we're working closely with Marty and purchasing and uh, to make sure that we stay within the uh, uh, grant allocations that we have. So Mr. Chairman, if it's uh, uh, all right with you, I would request that we allow uh, Chief Bornazian to approach the podium and uh, possibly uh, bring us up to date with regard to the pre-con on that uh, 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 fire truck and uh, just answer any questions if any of us have. Uh, this is a great time for, for us, and I think it's very important that the board be kept informed uh, because this is a specialized truck. It's the only, it will be the only one in the county. So, Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, could Mr. Could Chief uh, Bornazian approach the uh, podium? If the rest of the commission is okay with that, I would be okay with a few minute presentation to hear about that update. So. Commissioner Shane Phil Toman, are you good with that? Yes. All right. Go ahead, Chief. Okay. Uh, Warden Bernasian, please approach the podium and you know the drill. Introduce yourself, talk into the microphone. And and if we can keep it between about five and six minutes, five and seven minutes, that would be great. I'll, ma I'll make it brief. Okay. <clears throat> Mike Bernasian, County Fire Warden. Um, the pre bill meeting is uh, is uh, one of the initial steps after award is given to a fire truck manufacturing. Um, Every fire truck that's built goes through a pre-con, uh, pre-construction. What they basically do is, the, the importance of it to us is to answer some questions and clarifications with their engineers, their electrical, their builders, the project manager, things like that. They have to transfer our bid, because you can imagine that they build trucks for the entire world, literally. Um, all bids are different, but they use one standard build sheet. So they transfer all that. So we literally went item by item on the build sheet whether it was something we spec'd or something we did not spec. We spent a lot of time at the conference room um, with uh, engineering and others. We spent a lot of time on the floor. We got to see raw material come in the door and how it's fabricated step by step. Um, we got to talk with uh, Freightliner. Um, there, are some, there are some changes that will need to happen. Um, most, of these, most of what we discussed were cosmetics if you want 12 volt power to the cab, do you want that in a cigarette lighter, a USB port or a USC? And how many and where would you like those? We're, we're down to the nitty gritty. Uh, shore power, where we plug into the truck to charge. Are there any outlets we wanna charge something on the truck while it's sitting at the station, like battery packs and things like that? How would that wiring look? Where would that be located? Um, compartment sizes, shelf widths. Uh, do we want a 12 inch shelf or 24 inch shelf? So this really, the, the bottom line is, this is not to change any cost at all to the contract. The contract is the contract for the set amount of money. This is, this is merely to make sure that what we envision is going to be built to how we envision it and make sure it's useful. There are some things we changed. Um, once we got there, it was obvious that we looked at a couple other trucks that our ladder storage had to be changed because it's too high off the ground and can't be angled down and things like that. So it was cosmetic changes. I met with Marty yesterday, explained this to her. 
because I know there was some concern about what the reasoning was for going to such a, a meeting. And I can tell you it was invaluable. So we got to see the beginning stage to the end product. And we got to meet with every single person in every building, in any position we would talk to, to have ask questions. Spent 30 minutes with the pump, their lead pump person, engineer. Specifically, how are we gonna maintain that pump? How are we gonna access that pump? Um, that's really the brain behind it, right? So having that ability was, was huge. So that's, that's really what that trip encompassed. The next step will be those alterations, modifications, or changes will be built into a spreadsheet. They'll work that internally to see what can and can't be done. It'll have to be agreed upon in all their different departments. And then once the final sheet is all worked out, that will come back to us and to Marty to be in the packet. So as a, as a document. So next step then will be uh, six weeks prior to their forecasted completion date will be a mid build inspection. I don't see that for at least a year. Um, so, and they're facing shortages like everyone else on materials and parts and that kind of thing. So that's, that's really it in a, in a nutshell. So any questions? Any questions for uh, Warden Bernasian? Thank you for the update. I do appreciate that. So certainly. Thank you, Chief. And uh, I, I do want to say uh, Mike established some, or Chief Ward Bornazian has established a great working relationship with that group. And uh, uh, look, and I look forward to seeing that relationship continue throughout uh, this process and that type of thing. And and I would encourage you as commissioners, if you get an opportunity, to make that trip to you know, at the next one or whatever, do it. Um, it's at uh, Rosen. Well, it really comes out of the grant, but because there's money set aside for it. But uh, anyhow, but uh, they really, really take care of you. That's what I'm going to tell you and, and that type of thing. So anyhow, with that, uh, I'll stand for any questions. And thank you, Mike. Any questions for uh, Commissioner Wendling? If not, I just want to piggyback onto something Commissioner Wendling said, and I'm, I no offense taken when you talked about the comments made about the dishonorable concept that night, and I just um, um, it, it does strike a chord I think to many of us in our own way because um, this is not an easy job. There's no how-to manual. You walk away with less friends than you had to begin with, and when you're old and make people mad like I do already, you don't always go in with a lot already. But um, with that being said. It is a tough job, and um, and it's one that I think I've learned that as you go through, that sometimes you celebrate your successes, but also question some of the decisions as you kind of become more knowledgeable and, and go by. And um, and to be successful at any level, it, there's a, an immense amount of effort that I don't think anyone really appreciates or understands. So um, taking away the performance of anyone and, and making a comment of them being dishonorable is is is, is sad in that situation because. Until you've been here, it's a lot easier than you think it is. So um, I do I do agree with your comments. So with that being said, um, with no, nothing else on the agenda except executive, I um, and I, I would I would take a motion to go into executive just for transparency's sakes. We do have a personnel issue, a contract issue, two legal issues, and some pre-decisional issues um, to look at. So. Um, um, at this point, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Shanfield. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Wendling. With that being said, we will go into executive. And before we do, uh, it, 